Wednesday broadcast at America's one and only Jewish Moments in the Morning Radio program. Heard on listeners' sponsored digital radio around the world on the web at NahumSiegel.com, on the NahumSiegel Network, and of course, on the beloved NSN app. Welcome to a Wednesday. Today, a big day for us. A big day in the world of Jewish education, frankly, because today we are kicking off and participating in and celebrating with uh, Yeshivat Noam at their 18th anniversary celebration right here, believe it or not, in the in the foyer, in the lobby, in the atrium of the amazing Yeshivat Noam in Paramus, New Jersey. And it's a pleasure to welcome everybody from around the world. As we've been saying for the last couple of weeks, this is quite a significant event. One of the reasons, because we remember the first day of Yeshivat Noam 18 years ago. And believe it or not, time flies. And Chai, 18 years later, here we are to celebrate this milestone. Rabbi Chaim Hagler, wonderful friend of mine and head of school of Yeshivat Noam, since day number one, is here to kick off the festivities with us. Mazal Tov, and welcome to JM in the AM. Thank you very much. Let's get Rabbi Hagler's microphone on. There we go. Mazal Tov, Rabbi Hagler. Thank you very much, <laughs> and we are so, so thrilled to have you guys here. I am thrilled that you are dressed in Yeshivat Noam, uh, blue and orange, it looks like. Am I, I, am I correct about that? You are correct, and uh, I want you to take special note of the tie. Beautiful. A special Spe- 18th anniversary tie. Special for the 18th anniversary. And you are, you're dressed to the nines, as we say, or in this <laughs> case, to the 18s. Uh, all set for Yeshivat Noam's big year. Actually, the year, of course, has already begun. Um, I will give you a couple of initial comments, if I may. First of all, just by walking around this building early in the morning, it seems that the year has gotten off to a very good start here at Yeshivat Noam. You, you pick up uh, you know, some of the things that are happening, the projects that are going on, the the things that the teachers are emphasizing, the, decor- the decorative uh, lobby with the beautiful pictures that shows activities that the, that the children, the students have been involved with, and it seems that the school has gotten off to a very good start so far this year. Um, I, I think you're 100% correct. We've gotten off really to a wonderful, wonderful start this year. <coughs> Excuse me, and I think um, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's really the teachers. It's the amazing teachers that we have that bring the, uh, the, the, the Avira and bring the building to life that you were able to see so early in the morning. Now, I have to make an observation. Uh, This might show my age, (laughs) but as I toured this... And I know how old that is. (laughs) As I toured this building, I said to myself, boy, times have certainly changed in the world of Jewish education. Schools are a little bit different. Uh, Yours is, I mean, this is a magnificent facility. Uh, Really an incredible place. And in addition to that, you see the creativity the creativity that I don't remember my teachers having, the creativity that I don't remember you know, people in my era really spending a lot of time uh, dealing with and concentrating on. And you just, you see the projects and the way the rooms and the school is laid out and you see just a, a tremendous, what we would say in Israel, I guess, a tremendous amount of homer, a lot of material, just a, so many things going on at one time. And uh, that's, you know, it's a tribute to the way things are today, I guess, huh? Definitely, definitely. And, and thank God, you know, Jewish education has grown and uh, we're meeting the children where they are and uh, making uh, learning Torah more exciting and um, something that they're really uh, enjoying doing. Rabbi Chaim Hagler is the head of school here at Yeshiva at Noam. So you, you, you have your own career. Uh, you had the opportunity years ago to be in a, in a variety of schools and different positions. Does somebody like yourself, you know, 20 years ago say, I, I want to start my own school? Or is this something that, you know, Fate had it, and God put you in the right place where there was a need for a new school in Bergen County, and you were there to fill this need. Because I would think that as someone progresses in the world of Jewish education, they might have their sights on being a principal one day or a head of school one day, but to think that you could start your own school from scratch, I would think that that's really a pipe dream. Um, it wasn't anything that I was ever thinking about, to be honest. Um, I, I was very happy where I was. I was working and, um, as a head of school, and um, I got a phone call from Rabbi Yudin. Our very owner by Uden. Correct. And I said, I'm really not interested. Thank you very, very much. And uh, as you know, by Uden, he could be very persuasive. <laughs> and convinced me, just come for a meeting to meet with our steering committee, meet with uh, Heshi Mortkowitz, who was the president of the steering committee, and several other members. And I agreed I'll come one evening to this meeting. As, a, as, as the story goes, actually, there was some confusion as to when the meeting would be. And we, we had mixed signals, and I didn't get home till around 10 o'clock at that night, and I had about five messages. Hi, we're here. We're waiting. We're <laughs> ours. So I call them back. I said, why don't you come over now? 
So I got there around 10.30, left the meeting at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I drove home and said to myself, if they offer this to me, I want to do this. And I only found out subsequently that as I was driving home, they sat and said, this is our, this is our man. We have several other interviews set up, but they realized I was the right person. I realized this was the right thing for me. Well, 18 years later, I think everybody in that meeting was right. <laughs> you can't That's deny correct. that. Rabbi Chaim Hagler, head of school, celebrating yeah. Yeshivat Noam's 18th anniversary. Um, and, and from that point on, people think, you know, you wake up the next day and you have a building like this in a school filled with seven, 800 <laughs> kids. It's just the opposite. You go through multiple buildings and locations, growing the school, convincing parents to send their kids to the school, because even though Bergen County had a need numbers-wise, still you have to convince parents that this is going to be the right place for their kids. And then, of course, we finally get to a day like today, all these years later, where you get to reflect and look forward at what's happening here, which is pretty amazing. That, that is definitely true, and there were a lot of growing pains, and uh, there was a, it was a team effort. And it was really wonderful that so many people pitched in to get us to where we are today. And I know that we had discuss, we've discussed this a, m a million times. The very first day, you just had this feeling as the kids were coming off the buses or cars. I don't even know if there was a regular route of a school bus at that point. Uh, you just had this feeling that, we, that you were off to a really good start. And this was going to work well. That is for sure. As the children came in, all of the work and the effort. And, you know, it was, it was a, a year and a half that we were working on getting this school right. open. And then the last few weeks, and literally, I'll tell you a story later on, the last weekend, just to get everything together. And a lot of parental help, right? Remember? A lot of parental help. A lot of parents coming in and, uh, and doing some physical work just to get things started and to get things off the ground. Uh, we are joined by the president of the school, Yale Barron, is here, who leads Yeshiva Noam. Rabbi Hagler, you, will, uh, you can tell this worldwide audience that there's nothing more important than having effective lay leadership in a school, right? That is, that is the case, and thank God, literally from day one, we have been blessed with wonderful, wonderful la leadership. Uh, Yale, I, I joked with you earlier. I said mazel tov on your appointment as school president, but, you know, you, you never know. Should you wish the school president the mazel tov or, or warn them what they're about to get themselves into? How have the first few months gone in this position? So far, it's been, it's been three months, but it's, it's really been, um, for me, a, a great experience. And what, what I really uh, have taken away over the last three months, as much as I recognized how hard and dedicated our our head of school, Rabbi Hagler, is our administrator, administrators and our faculty. It's even more than that. I, I've really taken away a, a, a very deep appreciation for the effort and, and care and dedication they put into our, our students. Uh, Rabbi Hagler mentioned the teachers. Uh, I'm sure you marvel at the way they're able to, uh, to teach the children during the day, both in Judaic and secular studies. Uh, we've spoken many times, meaning you and I, Rabbi Hagler, about the recruitment process, how it's always foremost on your mind to get the best people in here. Uh, are you satisfied, Yale Barron, with the, with the way that the faculty has shaped up for this school year? Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. I, I'm a parent as well, so uh, I, I've had uh, I have two kids who already graduated, three kids in the school. Oh, you're a real right veteran. Th that's right. But I, so I've been exposed to our faculty and knew how, how great they are. But in this role as president, I'm just seeing much more of it. And it, it's, it's really we're off to a great start. What would your children, the alumni, say if they were here right now? What would they say to Rabbi Hagler about what they remember from their days in Yeshiva Noam? I think, th I think they look back and, and it was a phenomenal experience for them. Some of their best friends today are, are, are kids they got to know and, and at Yeshiva Noam. They're in high school together and it's, it's really it was a tremendous experience for them. Do you have a platform or an agenda, something that President Barron wants to specifically accomplish this year now that you're in this position? Everyone comes in with a with a specific goal or something they either want to change or implement? Anything that uh, that you have in mind as this school year starts? So, I, so I, Baruch Hashem, I think the school is in, in really strong shape, and I think my role as president is going to be to further strengthen it. I'm looking into some initiatives we could uh, implement around increasing our financial stability and, and really planning forward strategic planning. Um, I, I don't think we have any major capital campaigns to initi initiate where I think our... Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> We've been through that, Harvard Hagler. <laughs> that's for sure. We're, we're in a beautiful building, as, as you could see, um, but there are things we could do to strengthen our, our future, and we're going to focus on that. All right. Um, and uh, you have no objection to Robert Hagler's uh, uniform this morning, right? He, uh, he looks all decked out in Noam orange and blue very proudly. 
I, I love it, and I'm, <laughs> u- I'm used to it from uh, all the sport games I've been to watching him cheer on our fans, uh, our, t- our students. So you mentioned the beautiful building, which it is. Just give me the layout here, and you don't have to go into the exact number of students, because I know people don't like to do that, but at least give us a perspective. Where we are now is what we would call the middle school? No, this is the, the uh, early, ch- this oh, is early. The early childhood and the elementary school. So the early childhood is one part of this building, right? and the elementary school first through fifth grade. Okay. Is so, here as well. So the, the youngest through fifth grade are in this building. And Correct. then next door is the middle school. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade? Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And when we, when we purchased this building, we had no idea that that was going to be what we were going to do. Because we, I remember, am I right that you were exclusively in that building? No, we were exclusively oh, in this it was building. Here. Okay. It was just this building exclusively. And uh, we thought this would be more than enough to right. hold us forever. Seems sufficient. And we just grew and grew and grew. And we, you know, again, our wonderful lay leadership started searching for another location and convinced the building next door to sell. Literally. And uh, we, we, we then debated, well, should we knock it down and add on to this building? It just was not financially um, responsible to do that. And now we love it. We love the idea that the middle school, that they kind of graduate out of elementary school, just go down the path. Right. And they're in the middle school, and they have their own building, their own environment, and it's it's just wonderful for middle school. When will all the excitement start? When will this parking lot just start to be very, very active? How many minutes from now? Around 8 o'clock, uh, you'll see um, students, but even a little bit earlier, some will start to trickle in. We have an early drop-off. We have so many parents that are working. Right. So you can drop off as early as 7.30 here, or pick up as late as 5.30. Um, but by 8 o'clock, you'll really start to see the students uh, streaming in. And uh, both buildings. Both the buildings start at 8, and both buildings will have plenty of school buses and cars coming up around that time. Yeah. And this place will really start to be energized. Well, it'll really, I always say it comes to life. Right. A lot of energy in this building where you haven't even seen the kids yet. <laughs> I can only imagine what's going to happen when they show up. <laughs> it, it, just gets, it just gets even better. President even better. Barron, I wish you the best of luck this year. Uh, like I said, it seems everyone here is off to a really good start, and I hope that the, uh, that the students have a very successful year. And I assume you're already preparing your graduation speech uh, for June, right? <laughs> <laughs> Starting to think about it, but uh, thank you, and thanks for joining us and celebrating our 18th anniversary. It's a pleasure to be here, and happy Chai anniversary to you. And Rabbi Hagler will check in later, Great. and uh, that is one of the functions of the school president speak at graduation. Am I right? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's one of the things you yes, turn to is. him for, for those words of inspiration. Those words of inspiration. Telling the graduates message. what they're going to expect in this crazy world of ours these <laughs> days, right? And it's constantly changing. <laughs> this is an ever-changing world, to say the least. And I acknowledged earlier, and in light of the week that we've had in the Jewish world, that one of the most important people in your school is the, uh, the I assume, head of security. Would that be the right, yes. the right title? Yes. And that's one of the things that, that, thank God, our schools, including yours, are taking very seriously, not just these days, but have been for years. And, um, you know, I, I joked last night as I was going to, uh, to my children's school, I said, I think we're at a point now where even I just can't get in anymore. Now, obviously, that's not the case. Parents and students are obviously welcome, but you do take, and everyone here takes, that whole uh, area of life very, very seriously. That is correct, as, as do we. So everyone should keep that in mind especially with the week that we've been having. All right, more coming up. Right, Yeshivat Noam. It's an 18th anniversary celebration. Blue balloons, orange balloons, a special 18th anniversary balloon in back of me, and plenty of, uh, plenty of decorative uh, items, plus the school choir is going to be here later on to help us celebrate. And the best news, we're here all the way until 10 a.m. Eastern time. No joke. All the way until 10 o'clock Eastern time, we are going to be here at Yeshiva Noam celebrating the 18th anniversary with everybody uh, in Paramus, New Jersey. Keep it right here on a very special Wednesday morning broadcast at JM in the AM. גם כשיש עננים שמכסים את הכל ולא רואים שום דבר רק עומדים במקום זה קצת לא נעים איך הכל מסתלק נעלם ונסתר ואז באים חברים לחזק להרים מביאים משפטים של אנשים חכמים אני עדיין בחושך Thank 
במשך שנים, מתרגלים לחיים, ממשיכים כך ללכת, עולים ויורדים, מסתובב לאחור, את כל זה עברתי. אנחנו גדלים, חברים מתרחקים, משפחה ילדים, הקשיים הרגילים. מה שנשאר מכל זה, זו רק ההרגשה ש... יש רק אחד שיודע באמת מה עובר לי בפנים. יש רק אחד ששומע
J.M. in the A.M. It is a Wednesday morning broadcast and a very special day for us as we visit Yeshivat Noam here in uh, Paramus, New Jersey. We are with Rabbi Hagler, who is the uh, head of school, of course, and Rabbi Hagler already a special guest calling in, believe it or not, all the way from Israel. Uh, help me with the pronunciation. Is it Ezra Snuckle? Snuckle. Ezra Snuckle is with us, and Ezra, I am told, is serving in the IDF and is a proud alum of Yeshivat Noam. Ezra, are you there? Ezra, are you there? Ezra, are you there? I am here. All right, Hi. now we got him. Ezra is here. You're on the air, believe it or not, on a radio show that I hope you're That's familiar amazing. with, JM and the AM. And Rabbi Hagler is here. Yeah, hi, Rabbi Hagler. <laughs> Ezra, it is wonderful, wonderful to speak to you. We are looking at your picture right now on the alumni spotlight chart, which uh, tells us about which members of the school's alumni are now in the IDF. Uh, tell us about your journey after Yeshiva at Noam. You go to high school and then uh, at he some point... He made Aliyah. Oh, you made Aliyah? made Aliyah. Yeah, sorry, um, so, yeah, I mean, I... Or I Originally, I started going there in, I believe, kindergarten. I was there since kindergarten. And uh, after finishing uh, eighth grade, uh, completing the full process of middle school, and uh, Yeshiva Noam, I, me, my family, and I uh, made Aliyah to the Yeshiva of Hashemunayim in, uh, in uh, Eretz Yisrael. Wow. How long have you been in the Army? So I've been in the Army for now eight months. Actually, tomorrow is my... Um, uh, official tekes or uh, ceremony for uh, finishing uh, basic and advanced training. Well, uh, mazal tov on that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And we could ask you to give a mazal tov to Rabbi Hagler and everybody at Yeshivat Noam because I'm sure an, a, a longtime alum like yourself would find this hard to believe, but they're celebrating their 18th anniversary of Yeshivat Noam here this morning. I know it's amazing. I, I still remember when they were in that tiny little, uh, little uh, well, I don't know, office building um, yeah. in downtown New Jersey, in, in the middle of New Jersey, before they moved in to that, I guess you can call it a complex in uh, Paramus. That is true. And uh, yeah, and I could just, I have plenty of, plenty of memories and, you know, a great shout out and a thank you to Rebecca Hagler and Moore Esther and the entire administration for, uh, 
you know, putting me on the derech, uh, which led me to uh, here, to Eretz er- 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 Yisrael, and the derech, you know, Zionistic, in regards, in, uh, Zionistically and religiously, and just straight out mo- uh, giving me the morals, everything I need to succeed, and to get me to where I am today. So thank you so much, and uh, congratulations on eight amazing years. Wow. Thank you very much, Ezra. Thanks for calling in, and mazal tov again to you. No and, problem. And thanks for representing the alumni of Yeshivat Noam. Right? Ezra, Ezra, just wonderful no to hear from you. Ezra, please send regards to your wonderful mm-hmm. family. Ezra is a graduate of our uh, third graduating class in 2012. Wow. Pretty amazing. Thank you, Ezra. Just, uh, just one of the uh, alumni, and when you walk around this building, and I'll mention this to Rabbi Hagler later on in the show, when you walk around this building, you do get the feeling that uh, Eretz Yisrael, Medinat Yisrael, Ivrit, uh, the Ivrit, the Hebrew language, are all extremely important uh, to the uh, the faculty and administration here, and they pass that on to the students, one of whom, as you just heard, is now a member of the Israel Defense Forces. Mrs. Aliza Chanelis is here. She is the Middle School General Studies Principal. A pleasure to welcome you to JM in the AM. Thank you. It's nice to be here. How has the school year started for you? How has 5779 uh, uh, kicked off so far at Yeshivat Noam? It has been awesome. The energy is just astounding. <laughs> How long have you been associated with the school? This is my 11th year at Yeshivat Noam. Wow. And uh, so you've seen a lot of growth. I mean, I know by then, by the time you were here, it already had, you know, many hundreds of students, but you've seen a lot of. Uh, Tremendous growth over the last 11 years. Definitely. When I came, there were three classes in the middle school, like 60 kids all together. Now we have 280-plus children in the middle school. Uh, it's booming. What's it like trying to put together and uh, and to supervise and approve the curriculum for almost 300 students and make sure that all of them are being taken care of academically the way need, they need to be? It is, we, I have a phrase we use with the students called, ooh, a challenge. Okay, <laughs> we like to embrace challenges. Or in this case, hundreds of challenges. <laughs> hundreds of challenges every day. It's what keeps it exciting and interesting. Uh, the world is constantly changing. What kids are interested in is constantly changing. The skills they need to be successful are constantly changing. And uh, we are always reevaluating, looking at the students we have, the world that we have, and matching the curriculum to meet their needs keep them engaged and excited all the time. Not an easy task, but as I said earlier, you walk around this building and I as an outsider get the feeling that what you just said is actually happening because of all the incredible material that's being taught to the students in many different ways, by the way. I see in different, you know, informal education, formal education, you get the idea Definitely. that you're trying to cover all the bases and reach the students in many different ways. Mrs. Aliza Channel is this here, middle school general studies principal at Yeshiva. No, I'm now, today is spirit day. Woo! Today is an 18th anniversary celebration. Explain to the audience how your cap, your earrings, and your sneakers uh, play a part in Spirit Day here at Yeshiva Noam. All right, we're going to use our descriptive uh, <laughs> skills here. So uh, my cap, we'll start with my cap. I have, uh, sometimes I post on social media and some fun things going on at school, and I hashtag it always, my job is more fun than your job. Wow. Because I do indeed find my job very, very fun. And you're in a school when you say that. <laughs> How do you like that? Well, you got 280 uh, <laughs> tweenagers. They are a lot of fun. Um, and the people here are a lot of fun, so my job is definitely very enjoyable all the time. Um, I got these really cool keychains on the first day of school as a birthday giveaway. Serving as your Noam. earrings today. Just, you know, replace them, put them on as earrings. Right. And, uh, and they do have smiley faces in addition to being orange, which I know is one of the school colors. Orange, smiley. But those smiley faces represent, you know, Happiness. Happy children. I'm looking at some smiling children right here. The ones who are here for early drop-off, <laughs> huh? They're here early in the morning. <laughs> and then you have sneakers that are interesting because uh, a lot of people like sneakers and like the uh, the comfort. Then a lot of people like That's to true. make a statement with lit-up sneakers. But you, you've gone the extra step, so to speak. You have sneakers, one in one of Yeshiva Noam's color and one in the other of Yeshiva Noam's color. That's true. They should make sure to take a photograph of those for today and put those Absolutely. online. Absolutely. So you have a, uh, a blue and an orange uh, lit up sneaker and that completes your wardrobe for Spirit Day. That's right. Head to toe. Here at Yeshiva Noam. Amazing. Uh, it must be a very satisfying feeling when, uh, when kids start the school year and you see them getting into it and enjoying the curriculum and really, you know, uh, uh, and really, um, uh, absorbing all the information from their teachers. But as Rabbi Hagler said earlier, it is those teachers on the front line that are doing this amazing job. And 
Absolutely. For some reason, in this building, you've always had really good teachers. We have amazing teachers. Amazing. They are, like, day and night committed to putting out the best work for the kids. They care so much, so, so deeply, emailing all hours of the night, reaching out to parents, reaching out to kids, making the extra time um, for the curriculum, but also for individual children. Boy, I keep saying school's different than in my day, but some of the things you're describing, very, very different. There's so much attention that, thank God, is being paid thank to God. each child by each of the, uh, by each of the uh, faculty members all their teachers and the administrators like yourself. It's really a, a gratifying feeling, I'm sure, for all the parents. Uh, well, I thank you very much and wish you the best of luck this year. And really get into spirit day. You, you, need, you need to really Woo! get into things today. Look at you. Why an 18? I mean, come on. You can't dress up in a wardrobe like that and then not be full of spirit. I, you'll, you'll see me outside in a few minutes. Oh, really? Greeting, greeting the buses. We will be spirited. We'll send some middle school students in here to share their spirit. You're going to be the 18th anniversary cheerleader this I, morning? I, that will be my job today, You, yes. you have many tasks here, to say the <laughs> least. One of them is middle school general studies principal. Absolutely. Good luck with that. And thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. We're wishing Mazel Tov to all of the Yeshivat Noam faculty, uh, in this case through uh, Mrs. Channelis and her role as general studies principal. And now the unique category that Rabbi Hagler uh, um, mentioned to both me and Miriam Wallach uh, weeks ago, the unique category of people have to be represented this morning. Those who have literally been with Yeshivat Noam, with Rabbi Hagler since day one. Since day one. Who would be with Yeshivat Noam since day one? Those would be 18-year parents, including Aliza Fishman, who is here yes. this morning at JM in the AM. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank and you happy Spirit me. Day. Happy Spirit Day Are to you, you into the 18th anniversary celebration? It's a little bit surreal to me, having been here since the day they opened their doors. I, I, you know, I've seen my kids grow up through all this time, but the fact that the school has reached this... Uh, this milestone is, is really astounding to me. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Thank God. Tell me about the very close-knit quarters at the beginning of this journey and now being in buildings like these. You know, I, I made a few uh, notes for sure. myself yesterday, and, and one of them was about that original building on South Washington Avenue when um, the, the night before school opened, we were, it was a grand total of 53 kids or so at the time, and all the parents were there setting up the building the night before, my husband was building the wireless network. We were <laughs> knocking nails into walls to hang clocks. Um, it was really uh, some of my closest friends now. I know from the beginning days of Yeshivat Noam when we all, we all were part of this close-knit, amazing community that just came together to create what we have here today. And it is pretty and amazing. amazing. And I can imagine the, the bonding that took place during those yeah. experiences early on. Yeah. Uh, as, and there are, there, as you just mentioned, 53 students. Obviously, there are other people in your group of 18-year parents. There are yes. Obviously, yes. It, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful group of people that have uh, that a have wide this enough spread in our children. That have this <laughs> distinction and a wide enough <laughs> and spread of the ages <laughs> to make sure they've stayed with Yeshiva exactly, Dog exactly. for all these years. Uh, you, and you have alumni already in your family, obviously. Yes, I have three daughters who have graduated. What would they say about son. today? What would they say from their perspective of what they remember about this school? When I was talking to them about it, they, they were astounded. I mean, when Rachel started, Rachel is now a sophomore in Hunter College. Wow. And she is, um, you know, she was part of the, the first nursery class here at Yeshiva Nam. So she was the youngest, and she was the youngest in the class. So she was literally the youngest uh, child to have started this school. Um, they were astounded. You know, even as you see things differently from an adult's perspective, right. really, than you do from, from a kid's perspective. But even from their perspective, you know, my daughter, who's turning 18 in a few months, it boggled her mind that things were so, were so connected, that things were, you know, as she grew up, the school grew up. And uh, it's pretty amazing to see. Yeah, they really, it's a parallel uh, a growth, yeah, to say exactly. the least. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that exactly. group of students and the parents uh, for all these 18 years. Aliza Fishman, she represents a unique group, 18-year parents here at Yeshiva Noam, and she is Just celebrating gonna... Spirit Day on this 18th anniversary celebration. Yes. Mazal tov to you Thank and you to all the parents. Me. Thank you very Mazel much. Mazal tov Yeshiva Noam. Mazel tov Yeshiva Noam is right. It's spending Wednesday here at Yeshiva Noam. I do want to remind our listeners that after the show, we are on our way to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Tomorrow we will be broadcasting from Pittsburgh, and uh, we're going to be emphasizing themes Mrs. Hagler, or as I call her, Javi Hagler, welcome to the show. 
Um, we're going to be emphasizing themes that are by Hagler and his staff are always emphasizing here. Jewish unity, being there for one another. I'm sure attention has been paid to what happened this week and that students have reached out uh, with the guidance of their administration and faculty to our brothers and sisters in Pittsburgh. We're going to do that tomorrow. Uh, we leave after this great show at Yeshivat Noam. And we have two fresh juniors in the building. <laughs> Two young ladies who are going to be uh, taking on the rigorous academics at the Frisch School later today, but did not want to go to school without first stopping by at Yeshivat Noam because both of them are um, uh, alumni of Yeshivat Noam. Neely Scharf is here. Who's Neely? Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you. It's nice to have you here. And Kayla Stelzer, is it? Stelzer, yeah. Also here this morning. Good morning to both of you. Happy 18th morning. anniversary. Yeah, happy 18th you anniversary. You might be in a different school now, but you insisted on coming back to celebrate, right? Yeah, of course. We're, we're on our way to school, and then my dad's like, you have to go. So we're like, <laughs> okay. So That's he dropped great. us off. <laughs> See, your father's among those parents has great hakarat hatov to Yeshiva Noam. It's yeah, as simple yeah. as that. All right, I'm going to give each of you a chance to give us, I don't know, a memory, something that you want to say about what the school did to prepare you for what you're doing now. Give me something about Yeshiva Noam that, uh, that really helped you in your young life? Um, I just really loved my teachers here. Like, I love, they're all amazing. Um, they really prepared me, especially for Gemara. <laughs> Rabbi <laughs> Kurtz was my teacher. <laughs> yeah, I was really prepared for Gemara. I love Gemara now. Well, that's wonderful. And uh, Neely? Um, I remember when I was here, all of, our, all of our teachers used to invite us to their houses for Hanukkah and for Purim, and I remember I would like love going to my teachers' houses to spend time with them outside of school. Wow, very good. I'll tell you, we keep comparing today to my day, and in my day, nobody wanted to spend time with their teachers after hours. You guys, <laughs> you guys went ahead and made sure to have a good time with your teachers, especially on special occasions as you just described. Yeah. Well, Neely Scharf and Kayla Stelzer, now in Frisch, I hope things are going well. Yeah. yeah. Do the Frisch Great. people know that you're a proud uh, proud Noam alumni? Yeah. Yeah, they know it. <laughs> are there other uh, Noam alumni in Frisch? Yeah, a lot. Right, very nice. And uh, so send our best over there. And thank you so of much course. for joining us this morning. And happy Chai yeah. Spirit Day yes. here at Yeshiva <laughs> Noam. They may go to a different school now, but they're dressed like proud alumni of Yeshivat Noam. More coming up. You're listening to a Wednesday morning edition of JM in the AM. We are at Yeshivat Noam in Paramus, New Jersey. Keep it right here at the Nahum Siegel Network.
JM in the AM are live at Yeshivat Noam. We're celebrating 18 years, believe it or not. Those of you who remember 18 years ago when Rabbi Hagler joined me on day one of Yeshivat Noam, guess what? It's 18 years later. I know it's hard to believe, but here we are with a lot of wonderful young students, a lot of great parents, faculty members, a lot of very spirited members of the administration. I noticed, I think it was a... Uh, one of the adults here had a, a wig on in the, in the colors of the school, both blue and orange. They're very creative outfits that are being um, uh, utilized today in the Shivat Noam 18th Anniversary Spirit Day uh, here at the school. And uh, I hope everybody out there is getting a, a taste of this great celebration. Tamar and Ross Rothenberg are here. Uh, many of you, of course, are familiar with the Rothenberg Law Firm. Many of you are familiar with the fact that the Rothenberg sponsored our 2018 Kosher Halftime Show. Many of you are familiar with the fact that both Tamar and Ross are very active and proud parents at Yeshivat Noam here in Paramus, New Jersey. Boker Tov, good morning, and Mazel Tov to both of you on this big 18th anniversary celebration. Good morning, and Mazel Tov Nachum. I appreciate good that morning. very much. Good morning. So, is there a way to encapsulate in these couple of minutes what this school is all about, why it's such an important part of the Jewish community of New Jersey and this country? I think you could just look at the children walking in right now. Look at the smiles on their faces. Yeah, they seem happy. What's the story with these guys? <laughs> they very, seem, very they strange. <laughs> very strange. That's what I was thinking, frankly. But this is an everyday experience. These kids come at the school every single day with smiles on their faces. Pretty amazing. It's not easy uh, running a school in 2018. It's a, a little bit of a crazy world out there. Uh, there's a lot of demands. Academically, there are a lot of demands on students. And at the same time, you want them to have this disposition, right? You want them to be as uh, happy as possible and have as much fun as possible. What goes on here, Tamar, that they're able to balance all of this and, and really accomplish everything on such a big level? I think what's unique about this school, Nahum, is that the, the administration, the teachers, the faculty, they create this extremely warm environment for the school. So they feel warm, they feel comfortable, they feel welcome, and, and that in essence makes them prepared and almost happy to really succeed academically they they feel less pressure they just they th they thrive here all right one of the uh, one of the things all of us as parents hope for is that we drop over at kids at school or get them there you know by school bus and that they have good calm peaceful productive days because we know how stressful it could be if those days are, you know, the opposite for parents. You know, it, it makes it makes nighttime very challenging, frankly, or after school hours very challenging. Do you get that relaxed feeling as a parent that the kids come home and they've had the type of day I just described? I don't really know how to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should bring our kids in for this answer. I wonder what they would say to that. They're right over there. Who's here? We have, we have Josh and Neely. Josh, come say hi. Josh, come say hi. <coughs> hi. Josh. So when the day ends, did you get my question? When the day ends, do you look back like you really had a good, peaceful, productive, and fun day? Is that the way things end up at Yeshiva Noam? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jo Josh has been told that there's no alternate answer to that question. <laughs> well, tomorrow at least they got the answer, right? That's right. At least we got the answer. Um, we work hard to get the answers right here at Yeshiva Noam. <laughs> you can say that again. Uh, you know, we were talking earlier about the beginnings of this school, and I don't know what year you guys started being involved, and you can tell us how long ago it was. Can, we, can I tell you on the air? Sure, why not? Sure. Uh, we didn't get into this school originally, Nachum, if you can believe that. Wow. We were waitlisted. <laughs> wow. That's, yes. that's how packed they were. We huh? were living in Riverdale at the time. But I can tell you why I wanted to come here. Yeah. If I, if I, just two sure. seconds. We went to a few different schools in the Bergen County area, all of which are really some great right. yeshivas all here. All doing a good job. And we watched Rabbi Hagler walk around this school. And at the time, I don't know, there were six, 700 children. They said, I know every kid. Who knows every child? Little kids, they call them buds when they walk into this school. Every single child. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, David. Hi, Rabbi Hagler. He knew every single kid. And that really, it starts at the top. And that's when Rabbi Hagler can, you know, they say you can fake caring, but you can't fake being there. Car accident something that I do, get an email, there's something happened, one of the buses in the school, I come home, everything's fine, what happened? Well, it was a little bit of a fender bender, but the police were there, and Rabbi Hagler was there. <laughs> As the bus was crashing, Rabbi Hagler, Superman, jumps on the bus, yeah. and he's there. <laughs> Three weeks later, there's a hockey game, Rabbi Hagler's there, JEC on a Tuesday night. So again, I think the kids see from that, from the top, you care, you're there. 
And that's what Rabbi Hagler is all about. Yeah, Rabbi Hagler's friends, by the way, have paid the price for that. <laughs> because Rabbi Hagler's friends have been with Rabbi Hagler when he was called away and had to end our, uh, you know, our social evenings early. But, you know, that's, that's the price you pay well, when you're just dedicated to these a These are Rabbi Hagler's friends now. <laughs> you can say that again. All these wonderful friends. And I'm jealous of his ability to know every kid. It would take me two months to learn every kid's name in this school. That's amazing. Really, that is it's a pretty really amazing, amazing accomplishment. Uh, speaking to Tamara and Ross Rothenberg, very active parents. You were, you were referred to as star parents here. So you've gone from waitlist to star. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty big leap, huh? <laughs> oh. Well, yes, we, we did. We were waitlisted, and we were signed up for another school. And in, well, I remember one, Erev Shabbos, on a Friday, uh, Erev Shabbos in June, we got a phone call. We were living in Riverdale at the time. We got a phone call on our voicemail from Rabbi Hagler saying that we were accepted to Yeshiva Noam. And... I turned to Ross and I said, let's start packing. <laughs> literally to move to Burton County? Literally to move to Burton County. We moved in August. So you are really a testimony to the, to just how great this school is. To move the entire family, just to make sure you're close to Yeshiva Noam. Pretty cool. And, and now in the school, how many? How many Rothenbergs are in the school right now? We have two right now. We what have three grades? children. We have um, Josh in sixth grade and Neely nice. in second. And we have one alumni, Ellie. He's an, a freshman in Frisch. Very cool. So, so your family has both buildings in use each day. They're enjoying both of these. We spend uh, a lot of time on Century Road. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> and what do you like doing for the school? What are some of the things you've gotten involved with that you like to do, you know, as a volunteer parent? Um, over the years, I think I volunteered on, I don't know, almost every committee. <laughs> But probably my favorite committee is the parade. And actually, hi, Mozzie. Mozzie, she helps us with the parade. Um, I brought today a present for Miriam because last year at the parade broadcast, <laughs> she said she wanted a cake right. from Yeshiva Noam. So this is for you, Miriam. We, th we thought that was a very innovative uh, a costume or get-up or outfit for the parade. You don't mind if I wear this all the time in the studio? No, we, I wear it all the time at home. I all, all the time. I feel I deserve a cake all the time in the studio. Thank you. You're so welcome. Have Enjoy. And in 2017, based on my tour of the building earlier this morning, in 2017 the school was actually recognized for their role in the Celebrate Israel Parade, right? Yes, we won. First in prize. I mean, we mistake. we think we win every year. Right. You were you, you were annoyed that 2017 meant you couldn't win in 2018. Correct. That's but <laughs> everyone's a winner at Yeshiva Noam. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Uh, so there you have it. Uh, Tamar and Ross Rothenberg, uh, uh, they, are, they are great examples of people who are taking great pride in this amazing school. And um, uh, with two students here at Yeshiva Noam, anything else you'd like to add, Ross? Uh, another 18 years, uh, you know, onward and stronger. Yeah. Um, Happy high anniversary to Yeshiva Noam. It's yeah. pretty amazing. And uh, Tamar, anything you'd like to add in, on this auspicious day, this day of celebration? Oh, I just think we have to keep it up, keep up the spirit, keep up our academic excellence, and just keep being who we are here at Yeshiva Noam. Let's hear it for the Rothenbergs, everybody. <laughs> Thanks Nothing. so much. Come back tomorrow, and you'll see these kids will be just like this, just as happy, and that's so really what it's all is, about. This is no put on. This is not a show. This is not, this a, is show. not a show. As no. much as this is a show, this is not a show. No, they wear tutus every day. <laughs> they, they will, not the boys. They will walk in with this disposition tomorrow morning, you're saying. All right. Absolutely. That's great to know, and it certainly seems that way from here. More coming up. You're listening to JM in the AM.
J.M. in the A.M. It's Miami, of course. Uh, my name is Nahum Siegel, and this is America's one and only Jewish Moments in the Morning Radio program heard on listener-sponsored digital radio around the world on the web at NahumSiegel.com and the Nahum Siegel Network and, of course, in the beloved NSN app. We're at Yeshiva Noam, and you know why there's so much noise in the background? Because there are so many happy youngsters who are now in school. Arrival has begun. And we are being watched and observed by some uh, by a large group of orange and blue wearing students who are ready for Spirit Day, ready for the 18th anniversary celebration of Yeshivat Noam, here at JM and the AM. Hey, our good friend DJ Wartelski is with us live via telephone. DJ, welcome to JM and the AM. Well, Nachum, thank you. Nice to speak with you. What do you remember now that you're a uh, now that you're a big shot high schooler in Manhattan? What do you remember about Yeshivat Noam? Um, I remember a lot of things, um, but primarily I remember just the, the warmth of the spirit. I, every time that there was some stuff on, that the high was always there, it's always seeing every other student, not just, not just any student in particular, but everyone, well, the high was there for everyone. Well, we thank you for checking in with us. Happy Chai anniversary to you and all of the uh, uh, alums from Yeshivat Noam. More coming up here at JM in the AM. Uh, Mrs. Esther File is here, the founding early childhood director of um, Yeshivat Noam and the current admissions director here at Yeshivat Noam. I was told, Mrs. File, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Nachum. I was told that you were the very first hire that Rabbi Hagler <laughs> brought into Yeshivat Noam's family. That is true, and I remember the night that I met Rabbi Hagler. I was working at another school, and we just wanted to check out what was going to be the new kid on the block. <laughs> and um, we, there we were, sitting in shul, and Rabbi Hagler got up to speak, because that was all there was of Yeshivat Noam at the time. He started speaking, and I could feel the threads of what he was saying going straight into me, and I was hooked. I was done. I knew this was going to be something extraordinary and it has and you know what Nahum I'm looking at all these kids this is about double what we had the first year <laughs> and uh, and your the position of <clears throat> of early childhood director now has a little bit of a different focus than you had at that time you wanted to you were starting the department you were right. starting a school you were establishing what the curriculum would be moving forward right. very different than people who are in a position today right it is very different but with, with what's special about what I'm doing now, vis-a-vis -vis what I did before, I knew these children when they were three, four, and five. And for me, the worst day of my life was in kindergarten graduation. I thought I'd never see them again. <laughs> so now that I'm director of admissions, I see, see them huh? on the other end. And, I, and the, the thing that gets to me is that all the things that we wanted to put into these children, I see them. They are mentioned. They are warm, compassionate, kind, special, curious human beings. And it's a pleasure to have a different relationship, but it's an ongoing one. And, and we do. We know every child. Now the worst day for you is probably eighth grade You're graduation. You're absolutely right. right. That's yes. what I was thinking. And I get put in the second row 
Right. And I'm, I buy. And they're watching you cry, huh? Oh, completely. I bet you for Emma Hagler, it's also a tough eighth grade graduation. I have a feeling. Uh, Mrs. Esther Feil is here. Now, you're the current director of admissions. Right. If I lived in New Jersey, yes. would there be any chance that I'd have a kid in this school or Emma Hagler likely would not allow it? <laughs> um, we take pretty much everybody. We're an equal opportunity employer. Oh, so I would have a shot. You would have a shot. I would make sure you'd have a shot. I would take you around. You wouldn't be able to get through because we always have kids that come up and are dying to tell you what they're learning. They're very good. That's what happens when parents visit here? Yes, yes. They, they have students come up to they them and update up. them on what's happening yes. in the school. So you know that the students have to be paying attention. They could say that again. And My gosh, it's a attention. very special skill to be able to come up to someone who you don't know and be able to talk coherently, yeah. articulately. I know it. It's an impossible skill. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> and, artic and enthusiastically right. about what goes on. Uh, Ray Hagler is here, obviously, to make sure that he blocks <laughs> any type of admission of the Siegel family into the school. <laughs> no, I was actually just going to say that there's always room in this school for Stacy Siegel's children. <laughs> <laughs> After all, you go back a long way with her. That's that true. Is true. That is true. Uh, all right, so I do have an in. I just discovered that it's who I'm married to, but at least I have an in. Anyway, um, so here we are. Uh, you know what's interesting about the admissions process these days? Tell me. And I know that this is true with high schools. You'll tell me if it's true in elementary school. It's going on year-round now. Yes. It's a year-round process. You know, we, we joke about the uh, recruiting process in Yeshiva being like, you know, the college basketball coaches who are doing it year-round. This is what's going on here now. You're doing this as a, as a 12 month a year job. It is pretty much a 12 month a year job. It used to wind down around January. Right. Not at all. Before Pesach and after Pesach, it becomes a flood. It just it's people are just coming from. It's it's a different world. People are moving more. People are reconsidering more. The word of mouth gets out, and right. we have people that are. First of all, it's a tremendous diversity that's coming for a diverse amount of reasons. And we're always here. And the, the, the thing is, they need to come for a tour because the kids and the teachers are the beating heart of this school. And if you don't see that, you don't get a sense of it. And you can see it pretty much at any time. We do have interesting times like the day before winter break. Right. Yeah. That's a special time when we have Hanukkah celebrations, we have Hatzmaut celebrations, but that's part of the culture of the school. And they need to see that. And it makes an enormous impression. That's what we've discovered is that there's a curriculum of the school and then there's an unwritten curriculum. You can't orchestrate that. You can't fake that. It's just there and you can see it at any time. This might be an inappropriate question and Rabbi Hagler might insist on handling this diplomatically, but I think it does reflect the popularity of the school. Could you share with us how many families unfortunately sometimes are not able to be in Yeshiva Noam because you just don't have the space, don't have the room? Um, we try very, very hard. To include everyone. To include everyone. No child should be denied either the Noam experience or a Jewish education right. for a variety of reasons. So we try this. When you're in education... But it's, it's got to be one of your greatest challenges. It is a challenge. It's a challenge. And and I've at times that I've talked with Rabbi Hagel, and I said, oh, what do we do? And he said, oh, I don't know, but I'll try. I'll make it work. And he makes it work. It's hard. And you want to also keep your classes at a certain... Yes. Right? It's not just the space in this Correct. building. You want your classes to have a certain population and numbers that make sense for the teachers, right? But the Correct. truth is, that is important. The classes have to be... You know, it's not just one more child. Each child is a universe unto themselves. And it's 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 a balancing act. It's a act. challenge. How's the Noam Sports Department doing? Oh. They're doing well? We actually... If I could, we had our Please. first game last night. Mazal Tov. Uh, was it girls, a victory? Girls 7th and 8th grade basketball, and uh, they won. Wow. This is a <laughs> team that has won three years in a row the championship. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that. You seem yeah. like a big fan. Uh, listen, <laughs> when we have people coming and we show them the middle school, we tell them, I just need you to know we take our sport seriously. Uh, do. Now I see why Mrs. File was your first hire. <laughs> because of her enthusiasm. She's just, she's a, you know, she's a ball of fire here about Yeshiva Noam. So. Yes, she is. She really represents everything that we are at Yeshiva Noam. And it was with me every step of the way in building this wonderful, wonderful school. Amazing. Do you like all the noise that we're hearing now? I love this noise. You like this noise. This is phenomenal. This is what makes it work. And I will tell you that we, as one I think it was Ezra Snickle that said we started in an office building. Right. That's, I, that's you know, how he described You it. know where we started? We started in Rabbi Hackman's dining room, actually. <laughs> right. so that's where it all began. That's, that's where, where we it all hiring. began. When we hired teachers that first year, we were meeting with them in my dining room. Pretty amazing. Anyway, it just uh, as you reflect on it, it's, it's really an incredible accomplishment. 
Uh, Mrs. Esther File is the founding early childhood director 18 years ago. 18 years ago. Of Yeshiva Noam and now serves as the director of admission. She's the one you want to know. Believe if you want to get your kid into Yeshiva Noam. <laughs> She's the one you want to meet. She's the one you want to impress. She's the one you want to make sure to tour the building with and get those t uh, teachers and students. I will tell you something, Nachum. I find myself more impressed with the parents that come by the way they talk about their children and what they're looking for. I'm glad that, you said that. Yeah. I wonder sometimes about our generation of parents. I'm glad you said that. I, f I find oftentimes that Rabbi Hagler and I have spoken about it. When you hear parents talking about their children, you learn a lot about parents. Correct. And we've learned over the years that for parents coming to the school and interested in the school, they care about their children. They care about their children's education, which is different from schooling. Right. Schooling is schooling. Correct. Education is broader. One of the reasons I'm glad you said that is because, honestly, as you know, you know, we spend a lot of time speaking about problems in the community on this show for obvious reasons. I mean, it's important to highlight them and to get people to pay attention to them. But for you to tell us that there are a lot of great parents in our community who act the way you just described is really heartwarming. That's great. I'm glad you said that. Thank well, you. Well, thank you very much. And mazel tov to you. Thank you. You've My got, pleasure. You've got your orange uh, bandana on. I am on. loaded. You mazel tov, Yeshiva <laughs> Noah. Mazel tov. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We are celebrating with the orange and blue. The orange and blue is Yeshivat Noam this morning as they uh, are celebrating and we are celebrating with them the 18th anniversary celebration here on this uh, uh, incredible uh, Wednesday in Paramus, New Jersey. Tomorrow we are going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as we mentioned. I do want to uh, – oh, Rabbi Hagler, you can help me with this. I was uh, told by my good friend Dr. Mark that the Adlovker family is a, a family here at the Yeshivat Noam. Yes, they are standing right – So I have a special hello for you. This is, what is your first name? Shira? Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, I have special regards for you. You know that, right? So a special good morning for you. And what, and what are you, uh, today's your birthday? And happy birthday to you. Rabbi Hagler, how many celebrations can we take here at Yeshiva Noam in one day? We love it. We, we have an 18th we'll anniversary say. and we have a birthday celebration. We celebrate together here at Yeshiva Noam. So Sarah, mazel tov to you. I also want to wish a mazel tov to my niece and nephew, Shlomo and Devorah Siegel, the bris of their Bukhar is right now. It's happening this moment. So I say, I, I told them I got to be with you. But, but they, they, they are celebrating as we speak. So mazal tov to them from wow. all of us here at JM in the AM. All right, more coming up. A plenty from Yeshivat Noam, if you keep it here, everybody, as uh, we continue with this 18th anniversary celebration. Let's do this brand new selection uh, that has come across our desk recently from David Perlman at JM in the AM.
brand new from David Perlman. It's called Modim here at JM in the AM. Yeshiva Noam invites uh, prospective parents to come visit the school both this coming Sunday, November the 4th, and on December the 2nd. That's going to give you an opportunity uh, to check out the school, to hear stories, enjoy music, snacks, crafts, playtime. Uh, it, you could bring your three and four year olds, and uh, obviously it's open to three and four year olds and their parents starting at 9.30 in the morning this coming Sunday here at Yeshiva at Noam, which is at uh, 70 West Century Road in Paramus, M New Mo Jersey. Moradina will be there playing music with the children. It'll be amazing. Nice. She knows her music. Yes, she does. Um, walk ins are welcome, but you can register online by going to whynoam.org slash Sunday, whynoam.org. Slash Sunday, Rabbi Hagler helped me welcome Noam Framowitz. Noam, are you there? Yes, I'm there. How are you? Baruch Hashem. Nice to speak with you. Noam Framowitz is now in Israel. He is an alumni of Yeshiva Noam. First graduating class 2010. Wow. So you're living in Israel now, huh? Yes, I'm living in Yeshiva in Maladimim. Um, I finished the army about a year ago, a little more than a year ago. So you've already you've already completed army service. You're in Malay Adumim Yeshiva. How did the Yeshiva Noam education and experience help in getting you both to join the IDF and to be in Israel? I think that one of the things that was special about the Yeshiva Noam experience is that they really gave independence of, uh, of thought, independence of experience, um, really giving the students sense of responsibility over their actions and I think that really instilled the deep sense of responsibility towards my people, towards the, uh, my country. Um, I think that really the, the issue I know experience instilled a sense of responsibility. Wow. So it's not just the love that they have here of Eretz Yisrael, Medinat Yisrael, of the Hebrew language, but it's also a personal a sense of responsibility you picked up in this building. That's that's pretty amazing. Uh, happy 18th anniversary, by the way. As you know, Noam, uh, Noam, <laughs> Yeshiva Noam, is celebrating its 18th anniversary today. So I'm sure you want to wish Rabbi Hagler a big uh, mazel tov. Absolutely. I remember from day one I was there. Um, and it's really a remarkable milestone. And Rabbi Hagler, the entire administration and faculty should continue doing what they're doing for another 18 years yet Oh, man. Um, man. Thank you, Noam. It's wonderful, really wonderful to hear from you. Thank you, Noam. Noam Framowitz calling in from Israel, part of our broadcast this morning here at JM in the AM. Pretty amazing. And again, I remind you that Yeshiva Noam is open to the, um, uh, to the public uh, in a way this coming Sunday. Uh, all three- and four-year-olds and their parents are invited to be part of a Sunday time experience for prospective families of Yeshiva Noam. And that's uh, happening here at the building at 70 West Century Road, beginning at 9.30 in the morning. Go to whynoam.org slash Sunday, whynoam.org slash Sunday. One of our long, I don't want to say old, that wouldn't be fair, one of our longtime friends, <laughs> Moshe Kindler, who has helped us uh, in, in multiple roles promote the JM and the AM and the Nachum Siegel Network. And I'm very happy to call a friend, is also... Am I correct? The Yeshivat Noam parent. Well, yes, long time Noam parent. Is a long time Yeshivat Noam parent, and he is also the editor in chief, publisher, well, publisher, publisher of the Jewish Link of New Jersey, which has other um, publications. publications as well in places like Westchester, Connecticut, etc. Right? Yeah, Jewish Link of Bronx, Westchester, Connecticut, right. Queens Jewish Link. Uh, we have a paper also in, D in D.C., and we also have a paper in Rockland County. You have a paper in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, called Habiro. Actually. These days, there's a lot going on in Washington. Uh, the, yeah, the Silver Spring community is growing, expanding yeah. like crazy. Um, the, even D.C. community, places like uh, you know Georgetown, are there, it's really a growing community. And now. what was the other one you mentioned? DC. Uh, Rock, and Muncie. And Rock. in Rockland County. Very mm -hmm. nice. Wow. Uh, wow, you can cover the whole Jewish world just by uh, linking into the Jewish link. That is the plan, God willing. That Very is the, nice. That is the hope. Congratulations on that. I hope your uh, staff photographer is here this morning, uh, no, noting all the uh, celebratory uh uh, things that are going on here at Yeshiva Noam. I have a secret to tell you. Nahum. What's that? First of all, we don't we have we don't have that many staff photographers, but we do <laughs> rely on, for, for example, we rely on people like Amy Vogel and our Yeshiva Noam staff. Whenever when everything happens in a school in this community, we get inundated, overwhelmed with so many pictures that I don't really have to rely on staff photographers for school pictures. Yeah, that, the, I'm, that I'm sure. But now I'm thinking about what happens in your office because I would bet every school, and there are a lot of them in New Jersey and the surrounding areas are sending you about a thousand pictures a week. 
Uh, it's more like five, six hundred or right. so. But each one, yeah. and then your staff has to go through them, and you want to choose good ones, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. percent. Not an easy task. I just want to tell you something. You know, Yeshiva Noam obviously is a special place in my heart, but for us in the community, for the Jewish link, our schools are so critical. I show people who don't know our community, who don't know our readership, and I show them what's going on, and they look at the school section, they're blown away. They yeah. are literally blown away. They say, oh, my God, there's so much going on in this community. So, yeah, I call it the Yeshiva League. That's how I refer to the schools in our community, frankly. And uh, I don't I don't think most people realize just how just how packed it is, how many schools there are, how many students, are, how many families there are that are part of that scene. And actually, as I think about it now, uh, your paper is a great way to uh, uh, to study that because you have a special section dedicated to schools and. People are reading about schools they've never even heard of before, frankly. Co <laughs> you know? absolutely and, of course, correct. the ones they have heard of. Yeah, so. absolutely correct. I want to get back to Yeshiva Noam, but the 100%, the, school, the, the reading about the schools, like I get calls like from, you know, what's IBECC? What are these schools right. like in Livingston? And there's, there's so many good schools. Actually, Yushin by Hagler is responsible for one of my best Yeshiva Noam Jewish link moments. Okay? It was early in the paper about five years ago, and it's from this moment that I knew that the, the paper would, would be a success. It's, I think, maybe the third or fourth month of the paper. It's now, I think, early 2014, maybe late 2013. And uh, Rabbi Hagler sends me a picture of a hallway in Yeshiva Noam. And the hallway is filled with kids, Yeshiva Noam kids. I think it's this hallway that we're standing right now. And the, the kids are all reading the Jewish link, every one of them, <laughs> looking for their own pictures. And I said, when, when Rabbi Hagler sent me that picture, I said, I know I made it. I said, because every single kid in the school is looking for their for their picture, their friend's picture. I knew I had it. And That's uh, great. You may have to, you may have to uh, publish a special uh, section with all the photos that each kid has at least one photograph of themselves in the paper. You should know when I speak to, when I speak to parents. <laughs> it must be so frustrating. Everyone comes up to you. Why wasn't my kid in the paper this week? <laughs> the answer is, is, first of all, I'm in a beautiful business. The business I'm in is if, I, if they're not in this week, I can get them in next That's week. That's true. Okay, it's great. That's so, true. Moshe Kindler is here. Talking about Yeshiva Noam. Uh, all right, so 18 years. It's a big celebration. Uh, lots to talk about, obviously. From your perspective, as a parent, as somebody who's been involved, what is it that's unique about that about this institution that gives it a right to celebrate these first 18 years. Okay, can I be can I be humorous? Be candid and humorous. Yeshiva Noam has a very secret weapon. Okay, and that happens to be, and I'm I'm revealing it on air for the first time. No one's ever heard this before. Okay, happens to have be Rabbi Hagler's smile. Okay, that's what it is. Rabbi Hagler's smile. Okay, his beatific angelic smile has warmed so many parents' hearts, okay, has smoothed over so many situations that I'm aware of, okay. It's a lot more than the smile, but the smile is symbolic of who Rabbi Hagler is and what he is to Yeshiva Noam. And we love him, and uh, to me, Rabbi Hagler's growth over the 18 years has been incredible. And Yeshiva Noam's growth over the last 18 years is incredible. And we, we love him, we love him for many levels, and we love Yeshiva Noam as well. Well, I always knew he'd be great at this. I didn't know he'd be this great at this, frankly. I'm, I'm being very honest. I'm glad to hear you even thought I'd be great. I knew you'd be great. <laughs> I didn't know you'd be this great, frankly. Yeah. Uh, but it and is wonderful. Moshe, and you know, has two two graduates. Oh, I was going to ask. Noam. So you have two alumni. Two alumni. And what would they say if they were here right now? How would they reflect on the school? You know, f for them, Yeshiva Noam was just a, you know, I, I can't. First of all, how different it was from the way we went to school, I think. Not that taking anything away from the way we went to school, but the Yeshiva Noam experience for them was a positive, uh, Torah-filled, you know, secular education-filled, just a, an education that really, there was, they, they walked away from Yeshiva Noam knowing that, you know, I finished, I got through eighth grade, and I'm ready for high school. I'm ready for the next, I'm ready to become a full-time, you yeah. know, practicing, you know, Orthodox from Jew. And I, I, I have only Rabbi Hagler and the, the team here to thank for it, and and, uh, and my kids are by the way at all different levels, uh, and uh, we, we love Yeshiva Noam. I mean, I I, I'll, I I hug Rabbi Hagler regularly for this. So uh, I mean, that's uh, I kids know. tend to go off in different directions, but they all have this amazing base the, that they're rooted in them when they're in an institution like this. And one other thing, not to be too dramatic, but you know, we know it's a very sensitive week in the Jewish world, yeah. and we've been reminded that you know what sanctuary means, and I don't just mean buildings and, and rooms. I mean kids feeling safe and feeling like they're in a family environment and feeling like it's there. And I, and I think that's one of the most important things about our yeshiva education is that the schools in our community should feel, you know, safe and a sanctuary for kids, not just for personal safety, but in general, a place that they feel at home, a place that they feel like, hey, these are people who care about me. These are, this is a place where I can have fun. This is a place where I can be late at night for an activity and feel like I'm almost at home practically. And I think that that 
feeling does come through here. 100%, it absolutely does. I also want to say I think Yeshiva Nome over the years has taken security very seriously. Oh, that's for sure. Um, and, 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 and as a parent, we've always felt we felt comfortable with uh, with, with how with everything Yeshiva Nome delivers in terms of security. 100%. So, and yeah. I'm, I'm speaking even beyond the physical, but 100%, I think both areas are covered really nicely. Moshe Kindler, uh the next issue that hits the newsstands would yeah. be uh, today or tomorrow, no? Tomorrow, we go to today, actually, today is a very, very interesting day. I never leave the office on a Wednesday, okay, ever, because Wednesday is our deadline day. So it's a Wednesday. I'm actually out of the office. No one ever sees me out of the office on a Wednesday. So uh, but we go to print tonight. Uh, it'll be in the. It'll be online tomorrow morning. And uh, this week actually is a big week, of course. Post uh, a lot of sure. a lot of Pittsburgh content. Sure. Also, you know, a lot of also election content. A lot of elections right. going on this week. Well, I can so imagine how many ads you have for every position that's running in, the, in every little area of Bergen County, etc. Uh, it's it's uh, it's interesting. 100. percent Part of one of the problems we have is that the Orthodox community is a little divided. So right. we actually don't get as many ads as you might think. Um, ah, good point. Though I'm working on it. <laughs> good uh, point. <laughs> um, I also ha I have to give a shout out to my my special son Ayal here, who uh, who my sixth grader, who's just who's here. Ayal and, and uh, Ayal is dressed in orange and blue. Ayal is looking forward for, to his uh, middle school career. He's also he's happy he made the basketball team, and he's nice. looking to do uh, big things, God willing, going forward. Very so. nice. All right, and please, I'm begging you, as you go to deadline later today, the best photograph of me and Rabbi Hagelin you could find. I know it may be difficult because you know. Not as young as we used to be, but, you know, take the one that looks the best. Let's publish that I one. have bad news for you guys. Uh-oh, we're not in it, huh? <laughs> I, think, I think you guys are on next week. So, okay. <laughs> All right. He did toss me, he does to the kids. He says we'll be in next week. <laughs> be in next as you week. said, there's always next week. He just pulled the kindle on us. I can't believe it. I, I, believe, I believe Amy's going to collapse after this, and she'll send me pictures after. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Moshe. Moshe. There he is, Moshe kindle everybody. Reminder, we head from here to Pittsburgh. We're going from here. Yeshiva Noam to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're at the uh, Congregation Shari Torah tomorrow morning with Rabbi Wasserman. And um, this message that we've been touting all week of Jewish unity and solidarity and being there for our brothers and sisters, we'll be doing that firsthand. You'll hear the entire thing tomorrow morning live from Pittsburgh uh, with Harry Wasserman and company um, during JM in the AM. And this is, this is Gabby, Gabby, Gabby Altman is here. Gabby Altman, believe it or not, has been a parent at Yeshivat Noam for 18 years. How'd you pull that off? It's been a pleasure. <laughs> and you're joined by Elizabeth and Ofer Naor, who are here. Good morning. Nice to see you. Last time I saw you, you were up on a podium speaking. Yes. Yeah, just, like, just a week yeah. or so ago. <laughs> anyway, so you're all 18-year parents. This is one of the best perspectives of the day for us to hear what you have to say about this school. With all this noise... As your accompanying background, what can you tell us about the last 18 years at Yeshiva Noam? Who's going to start? I'll, I'll be happy to start. The last 18 years, it's been more than 18 years. Just understand. Wow. The school opened 18 years right. ago, but it started about 20 years ago in my mind and in my world. Um, I was in Shomri Torah Nursery School with Esther File. And I carpooled with the Haglers. <laughs> and there were these meetings that were happening and discussions that were happening in Rabbi Yudin's shul with Rabbi Yudin right. and the Haglers and Esther File. And, and I was I had a three year old and who else? Hashi Morkowitz. And Hashi, yeah, Hashi. And we were they my kid was three and they said, you know, we're gonna start this school soon. Da 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 da. So it really started, you know, longer than eighteen years ago. That's how I got pulled in. Pretty I was in amazing. a carpool with the Hagler. So when you say day one, you mean even before day one that you're involved? Absolutely. Yeah, we were hosting, you know, kind of pre-parlor meetings, see who was interested, you know, prospective parents who were very young. Their oldest children were starting nursery, pre-K, kindergarten. And um, we can't believe it's been 18 years, you know, since they started day one. And uh, you were able to attract over 50 kids that first year. Yeah. I guess those parlor meetings went well. There were many of them. We went to all of them. We weren't yeah. sure if this thing was going to work. The Hagglers were at all of them. Javi by, by Chaim's side at every single one of these meetings. People's basements, Danny Michael's basement, right. on Standish yeah. Road before he moved. And um, all over the place. And in Beth Aaron, you name it, there was a meeting. And we all went. We weren't right. sure if we, we were bought everyone. in. We wanted every bit of information that right. we could get on Yeshiva Noam. What was it going to be like? You know, is it worth the risk? And it certainly has been. You know, um, at the time that Noam started, it was such a large population of Bergen County that had to be addressed in terms of the number of students. They needed a school here. They needed another school. And people were wondering, is this going to be an effort to simply fill another school? Or is this going to be an effort to make this 
a state-of-the-art, you know, top-of-the-line place. And under his leadership, Rabbi Hagler, obviously they went in that direction, hiring a lot of very quality people. And I'm sure you could speak to the fact that your kids have had amazing faculty members during all these years. Beyond, beyond. The leadership that Rabbi Hagler has shown, and I don't want to dominate, so no, jump, jump in any time. It is, there is no, I've been involved in a lot of other schools and a lot of organizations. There is no leadership like the leadership of Rabbi Hagler. He used to walk around with this little folded up piece of paper in his pocket. This is in the days before Palm Pilots and for sure iPhones and any type of you know electronic calendar with this little folded up mission statement and take out the statement and show everybody saying, this is my vision for the school. This is what it's gonna be. And he never strayed from that vision and that mission. And I think he still has it in his pocket, maybe it's hanging up and in his that office. That combined with his connection with the kids, you know, and he stayed true to that. I mean, we have a first grader, so we have many more years with Yeshivat Noam, another eight, hopefully. And um, they look forward to Parsha with Rabbi Hagler in kindergarten and first grade, and, and he knows all of them, and they feel so comfortable with him. You know, the highlight of Purim for all these children, you know, from buds through alumni is going to the Hagler's house and, you know, dancing on Purim with Rabbi Hagler because they feel that love and that comfort and it just exudes that warmth exudes in the school it's, what would uh, what would your sons the alumni say if they were here today about this school they loved it i mean our oldest um gabby son isaac my son yosef were classmates in that first graduating class and that was a very special and unique class um they were 20 boys that graduated um but you know they formed a bond that's really unbreakable and they it must had, be very it must very be very special. cool being that class that continues to get added as time goes by right i mean they're the first every class they first, were the fifth first grade, of everything first i mean they looked at themselves a little bit like guinea pigs i think <laughs> but um <laughs> they didn't they, care they didn't you know they felt great about themselves they came out feeling great they didn't feel like they were at it you know because they were that first graduating class that they were any less prepared for high school they all succeeded they're all you know some have graduated college some are still in college they're all successful wherever they are and they're all still very connected. My son has said there is no finer educational institution than Yeshiva Noam. He really feels that way. The biggest threat to my kids when I can't come up with anything else, do your homework, whatever is, I'll switch you out of Yeshiva Noam. No, no, no. <laughs> they love it here. Every single one of them has such a connection to the school on every level. But again, I can't say enough that it all boils down to Rabbi Hagler's leadership. And without his leadership, there would not be Shiva Noam, and would not, it would for sure not be the success that it is today. I still see all these years later, 18 and in my head 20 years later, when I go to pick up the Mishmar carpool, Rabbi Hagler is there doing carpool. I don't know why. I think he's busy. He's doing <laughs> carpool. He's putting the kids in the Mishmar carpool. There was one night, and I'm sure the Naoris probably remember this. Years ago, we were building up a hockey team. There was only seventh graders. They lost every game. They didn't win any game ever, but he was so proud of this team. And we went to, there was a game an hour and a half way away in, at Kushner. There was a lot of rain, so it was an hour and a half way. Rabbi Hagler was there in his jersey coming to see this losing team he knew it would lose on saturday night and cheering them on i think there were two or three other parents yeah, but there, they made up for it in, in yeah. later years yes yeah. they which, certainly which was did. a saving grace for rabbi hagler and the rest of us <laughs> i want to thank uh, gabby altman elizabeth and ofer naor they are 18 year parents here at yeshiva noam it is unusual to hear that kids are still connected to their elementary school in your cases you can tell us that they certainly are which is very cool Absolutely. i must say thank you both thank very you. much Thanks. for joining us uh, JM and the AIM as we continue on this uh, Wednesday morning broadcast. And I am told that we have another listener, uh, actually another caller, I should say. Another caller with us uh, live via telephone. Somebody who now is enjoying life at the TABC. TABC student Harry Orlinski, welcome to JM and the AM. Hi, hello. Uh, what grade are you in in TABC? Ninth grade. All right. What do you remember about Yeshiva Noam? Seems like you haven't left that long ago, huh? Yeah. Um, I remember everything. Yeah. Harry, um, it's Rabbi Hagler yeah. here. Thanks so much for calling in. Uh, do you want to tell Nachum about your uh, sports experience here? He played on the basketball team in Ooh. sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. Did you guys win any games? Uh, 
Um, so I like you to beat that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tough connection, it sounds like. A lot going on there at TABC, huh? <laughs> you can say that again. Well, Harry, thank you so much, and happy high anniversary to you yeah. and to everybody at uh, at uh, Yeshiva at Noam. Part of our three championship yeah. teams. Were there three? All three, three in a row. Wow. Can they you they repeated. Can you imagine being in school for you know a finite number of years and coming away with three championships? That was Harry and his and his team. That's pretty cool. Well, congratulations, Harry, and thank you for calling in. More coming up. You're listening to. A Wednesday morning broadcast here at JMNAM from Yeshivat Noam and the 18th anniversary celebration of Yeshivat Noam. This is brand new from Benny Friedman. You're listening to JM in the AM.
Brand new from Benny Friedman, a song called the Secha Zena here at JM in the AM. Tomorrow we head to Pittsburgh. Or more accurately, after this show, we head to Pittsburgh. Tomorrow morning from Rabbi Wasserman Shul, Shari Torah, in the Squirrel Hill uh, neighborhood of Pennsylvania. Maradina smiling as I say that. Um, well, Amy Vogel is here, and it looks like, based on my notes, that we're going to be spending the rest of the show speaking to her because she has a lot of titles and a lot of distinctions here at Yeshivat Noam. Amy Vogel is Director of Development and Communication here at Yeshivat Noam. Is also a current parent and has uh, alumni in her family as well, alumni of Yeshivat Noam. And uh, first of all, a happy Chai anniversary to you. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying the celebration so far. This is a festive, fun school. Thank God for Shachris. It's a little quieter now here in the uh, atrium of, uh, of Yeshivat Noam. Did you notice the difference? Yes. <laughs> It was it was noisy, but great noise earlier this morning. Uh, and we'll, I'm sure we'll see some of the students later on as well as we continue here until 10 o'clock Eastern time this morning. All right, so first of all, what would your alumni children say about the Yeshivat Noam? If, if, uh, if uh, he or she or they were here, what would they say about the last 18 years? Uh, my daughter is in 10th grade, mm -hmm. and she had a fantastic experience at Yeshivat Noam. She would say that it is a very happy school. The programming is always over the top. Spirit Day, as you see today, is fantastic. Color War, Lagba Omer, class trips. Every detail, every I is dotted, every T is crossed to make everything child-centered and exciting for our students, and the students feel that. So Ariella's memories are positive, and you can see the students come to visit on a regular basis. They come to see their teachers. They come to see Rabbi Hagler. The doors are always open. They come back and visit, and I think that's a sign of how much they really love their elementary school and middle school experiences. And over the top is the way to describe it. I'm so glad you used that phrase because you walk the halls and you see it. You see the dedication to the projects and the dedication to the both formal and informal education. Plus, you see people in blue and the orange socks, blue and orange sneakers, blue and orange ties, blue and orange scarves, blue and orange caps, blue and orange whatever you, balloons, and you get the feeling that in fact the celebration is over the top, just uh, as you described in the form that the Shiva Noam always takes. Um, you're now Director of Development and Communication. There is uh, such a need for great Jewish education in our community. Someone just commented to me, by the way, uh, literally minutes ago, um, as a song was playing, about the level of education they feel their children are getting here. And they said it quite honestly, about other schools as well in this area, but Yeshiva Noam certainly among them. And I think that that says something about, uh, frankly, the New York, New Jersey area. We do have really high-quality schools that are providing amazing education. And in your position, you must be very outspoken about how important it is to support that type of education. Absolutely. Right now, we're giving out over a million dollars a year in scholarships. 20% wow. of our families are receiving partial scholarships to attend Yeshiva Noam. And it's the generosity of the current parents, the grandparents, and the community that are giving philanthropic gifts to support those families. Wow. So I feel very passionate about how important Jewish education is. I mean, you see in the building today how, um, how happy our students are, how well-educated, and we need to raise over a million dollars a year to give out scholarships to support those families. Plus, we are, thank God, in beautiful facilities here. Um, we have an ongoing capital campaign as well. We have a beautiful donor recognition wall on the outside of the building. It's ongoing, and we still have several million dollars in debt to pay for this beautiful campus. And on an ongoing basis, we accept classroom dedications and opportunities to support the school. In addition, it has to be noted, in all fairness, that if you want good personnel, if you want faculty members that are going to make a difference in the lives of students, those who are going to be over the top in the way they educate their students, they have to be compensated properly. And in this environment, there are a lot of schools out there, both Jewish and non, that want high quality people and are looking for them. I would definitely agree with you. And personally, I would say that no teacher is paid enough for right. how hard they work and, and how often they work. And uh, the programming that our school does in school and out of school is unbelievable. We just had a sunrise minion at Vasikin. The teachers all came out, the entire grade davening at 5.30 in the morning. We had another teacher in fifth grade do a cake boss competition in her house. All the fifth grade girls in the evenings. School here, no boundaries. Morning, night, Saturdays, Sundays, Shabbos. The teachers are 
always working for our students. Yeah, I was wondering if anybody uh, emulates Rabbi Hagler's habit of being available 24-7 and popping up everywhere, whether it's, whether it's carpool or games, but it sounds like some of the faculty have, in fact, copied his uh, dedication. Absolutely. Uh, Rabbi Hagler, that's a, uh, that, that, you know, it's one thing to be a mentor to faculty members and expect them to do their job well, but to get them to dedicate all their, or a good part, of their free time, so to speak, to all of this is a challenge. And obviously you have people who are following that directive here. We're, we're definitely blessed to have those type of people and they're passionate and they love the children and love Jewish education. That's why they do it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. All right, Amy Vogel's Director of Development and Communication here at Yeshiva Noam. Information, obviously just contact Yeshiva Noam. She would love for everybody out there who wants to be involved to be involved. Uh, plus, there are fundraising events. Obviously, there'll be an upcoming dinner coming up in March, March which 6th. we're going to talk about. Oh, it's already set for March 6th? March 6th. So it's set for March 6th. And uh, obviously, we want everybody in the community to recognize the importance of Jewish education. And uh, those who will be recognized that night as honorees by coming out and, uh, and supporting the cause. Obviously, we'll talk more about that as we get closer to the event. And there are other things as well. There are a lot of different ways that people can get involved if they want to. They can can be sponsor a day of learning, $180 any day in memory of somebody, in honor of somebody. We do Parnas Hayom. It's a great way to And that's make probably all available on the website, so right? I would guess. Everything. It's yeah. all there, so it's very easy to do it. If you're listening around the world right now, you can actually do it very easily. No need to call anybody. You can do it from the comfort of your own home right at your computer. So uh, get involved and uh, certainly look into sponsoring a part of the great work of Yeshiva Noam. Uh, Amy, thank you. And thank happy, you. happy Chai anniversary. Thank you. Thanks for Happy coming. Happy 18th today. on this Spirit Day, and um, and uh, wave the orange and blue proudly. Thank you. All Thanks through so the much. day, as everyone else seems to be doing here. Uh, Want to say good morning to Javi Hagler again. As I learn more about my wonderful, I don't want to say old, I'll say longtime friend Rabbi Hagler. Appreciate that. As I he, as I as I learn more and more about his habits of how he runs the school. Uh, I am sure that everyone out there joins with me in offering sympathies to Javi Hagler and the rest of the family for the level of dedication that he has, but I am sure you are very proud of it, to say the least. I know I and anybody who knows him are. All right, we're going past 9 o'clock, as we've been mentioning all through the week. We're going to go all the way until uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern time as we celebrate. In fact, the kids are going to rejoin us. Don't think the celebration's over. The kids are going to rejoin. The, the children, the students, the youngsters, the Buds, they're all going to rejoin us here uh, with a choir performance and all the noise that you'd expect at a wonderful school, so don't think that that's over with, folks. Uh, speaking of a longtime friend, Rabbi Yitzhak Motechen is here. He is the middle school Judaic studies principal here at Yeshiva Naam. Rabbi Motechen, welcome to JM in the AM. Good morning, Nachum. So great to see you again. I appreciate that. How long have you been at Yeshiva Naam? Uh, this is my fifth year, wow. and uh, it's been... Such a, an uplifting experience. I'm so thrilled I came to Yeshiva Noam. I've grown, I think, as much as the, uh, the Tommy Dim and Tommy Dote. It's a place full of just the most positive energy and enthusiasm for learning, enthusiasm for really so many things. It's a spectacular place. You know, we speak often uh, in the world of secular academics how many new innovations have come up in the last five years, 10 years, 20 years, use whatever you know, demarcation you want um, or time frame you want in order to... Uh, you know, in order to make learning more fun and learning more productive and the time usage even better. In Judaic studies, are we able to do that? Are we able to implement a lot of interesting new and innovative programs to make Torah study even more fun and interesting? Absolutely. And it's, it's something that if there's any new way of educating that can be used and a Jewish educator doesn't use that or try to see how to incorporate that into Jewish studies, then really you're not giving your Talmudim what they, what they need. Um, and the proof is that we have an amazing amount of participation in what we call our Shamati Torah Lishma program. It's a program that operates in uh, memory of Dr. Belazan, who was a pillar in the Jewish uh, Tina community. Mm -hmm. And we have a Dafyomi uh, that takes place every day during lunch, where 30 to 40 Talmidim and Talmidot, they learn from this abridged uh, Gemara called the Talmud Yerushalmi. It's a, a brilliant work. And every day, 30 to 40 students, they get their lunch, they meet in room 502, and they sit together with uh, Rabbi Finkelstein, and they learn Dafyomi together. Um, we have tens of students learning Mishnayot on their own, guided by their teachers um, every week. We started a Shnai Mikra Vecha Targum program, where we have about 25 students that are participating in that on a weekly basis. 
So the innovations that we've brought into uh, Limut Torah have not just elevated the enthusiasm of what's going on in the classroom um, in a formal setting, but really uh, in the times that students have when they're not obligated to be in class, they're uh, participating actively in, in Limut Torah. Well, now I'm really glad I asked the question. I've marveled at how some of our high schools have made unbelievable use of what would normally be downtime. But that it's happening here in elementary school setting during lunch. You know, lunch, as I remember in elementary school, was a pretty important part of the day. You didn't want to neglect having, <laughs> having well, you know, a fulfilling well, lunch. Well, well, listen, <laughs> I, I believe very much in eating that you know. Um, but it's really a matter of what the, uh, the environment is when they're, when, they're, uh, when they're eating. Some are welcome to learn. We have, uh, besides having the... Yeah, I'm just shocked that anybody's doing it. You say 30 what, 35? Oh, oh, between 30 and 40. That's... It's, and that's, that, and that's only one of the one of the Limut Torah right, Lishma programs. Plenty more Torah Lishma programs here. Uh, Rabbi Yitzchak Motechin is here. So I see that even you, in the in the position as Judaic Studies principal, even you regulated yourself to an appropriate wardrobe for Spirit Day for the 18th anniversary. You are actually wearing orange sneakers. They're orange and blue sneakers. Orange and blue sneakers. Sneakers. That you would think that you, again, in your position and representing the Torah environment, might think that you know uh, that m more formal dress. <laughs> would be either necessary or appropriate, but even you were sucked into this incredible celebration and decided to go in an outward fashion with the celebratory f uh, uh, outfit this morning. Uh, it's a whirlwind, but when you're part of Yeshiva Noam, you f just find that anytime you're shopping anywhere, <laughs> you're looking for orange. blue and orange. I have <laughs> three racks of ties in my, in my closet, <laughs> two are for the other ties, and then one entire rack for blue and orange ties. I wonder how he decided, Rabbi Hagler, that these should be the colors in school. That Don't answer, Rabbi Hagler. I'll save this for later. But there's got to be a reason why, in fact, he, uh, he went in this direction. And we see that it's a very big part of Spirit Day here at Yeshiva Noam, the colors. I, I don't know why, why he picked blue and orange, but I'm sure you it's You never not, asked that question. It's huh? not, well, I'm, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I am uh, assuming that it had nothing to do with the Mets or the Knicks. Because right. That I'm sure. Yeshiva Noam and I'm sure it has on a completely either. different area than they, than they uh, reside. Uh, Rabbi Yitzchak Motech and I thank you, and uh, the Islanders, yeah, that's why it's for. Are the, they're still the Islanders? I, I don't know, I don't but, but I don't think Rabbi, around? I don't think Rabbi Hagler was doing it for that reason. Anyway, Rabbi Motech, uh, continued success. I want to tell you something. You've, you've enhanced my morning, because I knew that I would hear from you that you have great faculty, and you do have great uh, rabbis and faculty members in the Judaic Studies Department, correct? Oh, amazing. I knew I'd hear from you that there's a great curriculum and that the students are using their time wisely, but did you tell me this morning, in all seriousness, that there's an elementary school, not high school, but an elementary school that's taking its free time and offering extra programming in Judaic studies, in Judaic studies, not necessary tutoring in secular studies, but free Judaic studies extra learning, and that over 30 kids are taking advantage just that one program every day is unbelievable. Well, I, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you, and I, I just want to reiterate and expand something I mentioned to you uh, about 10 years ago on the air that the influence that you had on me and so many others as we were growing up and uh, the role model of energy and enthusiasm for Yahadud and Torah was, was uh, not something that just inspired us as individuals but to be able to participate in uh, disseminating that kind of energy to others is something I, I'll always be grateful to. I for. greatly appreciate that. Your words are very meaningful. Continue your success in your leadership position and the happy 18th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you so much. Rabbi Yitzchak Motechin, everybody. Wonderful to reunite with him in this forum as we wish him. Oh, my gosh. Look at these Look at these little guys here. Oh, who's responsible for these little guys? Who gets the opportunity to spend the day with them, I'd like to know. Holy cow. Mrs. Files is acting like she gets to spend the whole day with them. Unbelievable. Uh, we have with us Rabbi Mordechai uh, Schwarzenski. Is that the correct pronunciation? Correct. Rabbi Schwarzenski is the yes. elementary school principal here at Yeshiva at Noam. I say congratulations and mazal tov to you. Thank you. You as well have a Noam sweatshirt, an orange scarf. That's right. You are not neglecting your responsibility to show the Noam colors today. Not at all. It's even personalized. <laughs> That's great. It actually has your name on the shirt. I like no that. No one can pronounce it, but it's there. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Well, first of all, how long have you been here with the school? Um, so the school is celebrating its 18th year. I'm celebrating my 18th day. <laughs> is that true? Um, I really just started in August. That's hilarious. So I'm brand new here. What attracted you to know him? What did you hear about this so, place where you said to yourself, you know what, I'd like to be there? So lots of different things. Um, some of the things that really stuck out to me were the, um, the there's such an energy and excitement here. 
Um, there is a commitment to such a strong mission of education. And, you know, from the moment you meet parents, teachers, students, you see that in every aspect of the school, there's a unified voice, there's a unified mission. Wow, very yeah. nice. And uh, I guess it's an unusual question to ask because it's not a, a big body of work, but how are the first 18 days gone? Like <laughs> all your expectations as you took this job, have they come to reality? It's beyond uh, the reality, beyond what I was expecting. It's even more than you thought. It's been amazing the way that I've been welcomed here, um, the way how just everything has been set up and laid out almost perfectly for me to step into this position and lead the faculty and the students. It's What's the great. great challenge of an elementary school principal these days? What is the... Uh, <laughs> that is a great question. What um, is the, what's the difficult part of this job? Because these days, you know, it's not simple out there anymore, right. as, as we like to say, especially old folks like myself. Right. So I think the biggest challenge we have is keeping students engaged, yeah. keeping them focused, keeping them really seeing the... Um, the meaning behind what we're teaching them, the relevance behind what we're teaching them. There's so many distractions today, as we all know and are aware of. So keeping them really engaged and focused on what we're doing here, I think is the, one of the biggest hurdles. And it seems like that's been very successful. I mentioned earlier that as I toured your hallways, and you may not be able to, and you may not believe that one could pick this up as an outside observer just by touring the hallways, but it seems that both the formal and informal education here is on a really, really high level, and one that's done in a very fun and thorough um, uh, manner. Yes, and, and thoughtful. And, and very thought thoughtful out manner. and planned out. And obviously the way, the way to accomplish that only is with uh, the great faculty members who are willing to, uh, you know, who are yep. willing to, to, take, to make the time and the commitment right. to and do that for the students. Yeah, the faculty has been my, one of the most impressive parts of stepping into this role. Well, yeah. well I take this opportunity to wish you a very, very big Mazel Tov and Thank a lot you. of great success. Thank you. 18 years from now, you might be celebrating your 18th <laughs> anniversary at Yeshiva Dog. I look forward to that day. And if you do, please invite us back at that point, if you okay. don't mind. But we'll check back in. You got it. All right, Mordechai Schwazenski, a pleasure. Elementary thank school you. principal here at Yeshiva Noam. I do want to take this opportunity to thank Madison Caterers. Madison Caterers are the official sponsor of our Yeshiva Noam broadcast this morning. Madison Caterers is making sure that... Um, Everybody has some uh, fuel to make it through the morning. So thank you very much for that. And, uh, and we thank you for your support, not just this morning, but of Yeshiva Noam in general. So Madison Caterers, a big thank you to you from all of us here at JM and the AM, and a big thank you to you from all of us here at Yeshiva Noam. Eitan Freilich is next. More coming up. Remember, we're here past 9 o'clock, going all the way until 10 a.m. Eastern time from Yeshiva Noam as we celebrate 18 years. It's the high anniversary of the orange and blue in Jewish education. That's Yeshivat Noam here in Paramus, New Jersey. From here, we go to Pittsburgh tomorrow live from the Congregation Shari Torah, Rabbi Wasserman Synagogue in Squirrel Hill, Pennsylvania. All happening here, of course, at JM in the AM.
J.M. in the A.M. It's America's one and only Jewish Moments in the Morning Radio program heard on listener-sponsored digital radio around the world on the web at NachumSiegel.com and the NachumSiegel Network and, of course, on the beloved NSN app, where if you want to go to Yeshivat Noam, one of the requirements is you must have the NSN app in your phone. It's a new rule that everybody has to just start it for the admissions department, that if you want to go to Yeshivat, if you want to apply, forget about go, if you want to apply to Yeshivat Noam. <laughs> You must have the NSN app in your phone. By We're the way, talking about parents, of course. The children should oh yeah, probably no, not have phones to be better. I meant the parents. Right? <laughs> if the parents are brave enough to apply to Yeshiva Noam, then they have to be brave enough to install the NSN app in their phone. Simple as that. Anyway, um, just half kidding because there are many, many parents here who are regular listeners of the show, I'm proud to say. We're going all the way until 10 o'clock this morning here at JM and the AM, extending the show until 10. And with me is not just, they're not only, I should say, by Chaim Hagler, but the aforementioned Javi Hagler, who is, uh, of course, Mrs. Hagler and has been the recipient of our sarcastic comments this morning about Rabbi Hagler being ultra, uber dedicated to Yeshivat Noam. Javi, welcome to the show. Thank you. I hope you take it all in good humor, which I know you do. I absolutely do. <laughs> you don't only you, nothing I haven't heard before. <laughs> you don't only take my comments in good humor, you take the whole situation in good humor. Uh, but you do see, up close and personal, how somebody can really be dedicated absolutely. to building something and to uh, keeping it established as one of the best Jewish educational institutions in our in our area, right? Absolutely. You've seen that. And, you know, Javi gets very, very involved and uh, is quite busy herself with helping out for Yeshiva Noam. Uh, we hosted a new family in Lava Malka. This past Motse uh, Shabbos. Well, new family must be a lot of families. In our home, there were probably about a hundred people. In our home, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, I'm it's, thinking that a very, it's every a year you have a lot. Event. We love to meet them this way. I get to know them also, and we get to host them, and they get to meet each other, and it's a really lovely event. Talk about courage. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing to be courageous to put the NSN app in your phone, but to host a new parent, Malava Malka, in your home. It's pretty cool. A week from this Shabbos is the uh, seventh grade girls Shabbaton, and um, all of the cooking for Shabbos lunch is done in our home. There's a group of girls that come uh, next Wednesday night. They'll be there, and they cook all of the food for the Shabbaton. We actually had a meeting kitchen. yesterday. I met with the group committee of seventh grade girls, and we came up with a menu together. And they're going to come over and cook with me, and then we'll eat in our house. It's a really fun activity. It's one of my favorite events of the year. So we shouldn't be talking to you about <laughs> about being living with somebody who's dedicated. We should talk to your kids about having two parents. That, that's actually about true. About having two parents who are dedicated to Yeshiva Noam and spending all this time. But it's these innovations. Look, we joke about all this, and believe me, your schedules are to be admired. But this kind of thing, which never went on years ago, of parents in your home and students in your kitchen and students who aren't your students, but are, you know, the students of Yeshiva Noam in your kitchen doing these activities and enjoying all this. And it's so, it's so different, unique. It's, it just seems like such a, I don't want to say better, I wouldn't be fair to the previous generations, but it seems like such a high quality way to educate and be a role model for students. It is very special. Um, I feel like Chaim puts every part of his being into thinking about how could he create a better environment a warmer place, a more loving and nurturing place for the students and the families. It's all he thinks about, and that's what we work to do. It must be interesting it, being creative with each other about all this. You're probably always thinking, what can we do different, and you know, Absolutely. what program can we create or recommend to our faculty or recommend to our athletic director, anybody you know who's in a, is in a, a department head, and. You know, and offer them, you know, a creative idea to, to just make things more exciting for the kids. Yeah, and when you come up with a good one, it must be amazing. <laughs> what's wonderful is that everybody runs with it. Right? Right. That, that's the culture here, to be creative, to try new things. And not everything works. Right. 
and we're fine with that. That's why I say when a good one strikes, it must be an amazing feeling. It is wonderful. Well, there you go. Well, congratulations. Thank What's you. the next big event is is this Wednesday. This Wednesday. Yeah. Um, this Wednesday they're cooking. Right. Then Shabbos, and next Shabbos they're, is going to be the Shabbat they're eating. Right. Um, what's after that? You've done this before, by the way? This is, oh my gosh. Have you, do, have you, had, yes. have you had menu challenges where afterwards you said, you know what? Maybe, maybe we should have left this dish. De definitely. <laughs> definitely have been, but on the other hand, seventh grade girls are very relatively predictable. They all want deli roll. Every, I don't, who makes, they all want deli roll. They're Every very year. predictable. Some of them things are the same. Some things we, ch we try to encourage them not to repeat. <laughs> or when adjustments are necessary, you'll make them. Absolute, absolutely. Mrs. Then, Javi. Oh, sorry. And then after they leave, she has to work for another few hours. <laughs> right. They leave and I kind of fix up what they touch left ups. behind. Exactly. <laughs> touch ups. Exactly. <laughs> Mrs. Javi Hagler, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have Rabbi Chaim Hagler, of course, who's going to be with us for the remainder of the show. Uh, Racheli Fold, a big shout out to Racheli from all of us here at uh, the Nahum Siegel Network. Um, eighth graders. These are current eighth graders. These are the ones willing to reveal all the secrets of the last ten years at Yeshivat Noam. These are the ones who I could put on the spot and see exactly what they'll tell us. These are the ones who are going to make Rabbi Hagler very nervous about what they might say in front of all these thousands of people. Is that, uh, is that the group that now sits to my left? Avigail Ehrlichman is where? Where's Avigail? Hi. Hi, Avigail. How are you? Ari Spivak. Where's Ari? Hello there, Ari. Uh, Mia Rabin, is it? Rabin. 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 Mia Rabin is here. Well, the, the, my sister was a Rabinsky, then became a Rabin, and then became a Rabin. If, if those of you who are interested in my own family history. That's why I said Mia Rabin, but of course it's Mia Rabin. Uh, and Eitan Book. Where's Eitan? Eitan, welcome to the show. All right, everybody. Eighth grade. Come on. It's eighth grade. We, we don't have to go to class. We don't, have, we don't have to pay attention to our teachers. All we got to do is work on the yearbook and get ready for graduation. Right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> they, they actually said yes to that, by the way. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't want your teachers to think they have nothing to do for the next few months. Let's at least make believe you're going to be paying attention in class. You know what I mean? Anyway, how exciting is this? Tell me how exciting it is to, uh, to be now an eighth grader. So exciting. So happy. <laughs> what are some of the things you're working on? Are you involved in some of the things I mentioned, like yearbook, graduation, all the different committees and events that are going to be taking place over the next few months? Who's there? Is that Chaim? Oh, Eitan. Eitan, go ahead. That's my dad. Um, Correct. <laughs> I'm doing yearbook and oh, nice. a bunch of other things, uh, after school activities and teams. These are all unique to eighth grade yeah. because – the early grades all the way until seventh, you get an opportunity to do some nice things. But the eighth graders, they get all the cool stuff to work on. Yeah. Uh, so what else besides your book? You said it's assorted other things. What else is involved? Uh, I don't know, like Daf Yomi. Nice. What do you got there, uh, Mia? We're doing the eighth grade girls play. Nice. All right. When yeah. does that take place? What month is that going to be? In June. Very good. So that's going to be a year-long project. Yeah. And we're starting to try out for all the parts now. All right. It's really fun. Now, you guys are in a very big transition. In addition to being eighth graders, you have to start thinking about what you're doing next year, right? Yeah. So what's dominating? Is it the fun of the eighth grade or the tension of what's going to be happening between now and ninth grade? What's, uh, what's going on in your minds these days? It's definitely a balance between both. I mean, there's a lot of tension with, like, high school and stuff, but... Eighth grade is, like, so fun, so it doesn't. Has the high school process started already? Yes. What, yes. like during the summer? Not summer, usually, but. Okay. Last month? Yeah. Over Yuntif, <laughs> discussion with your parents? Yeah. Getting their opinion about what they want your future to be like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then tossing in your opinion? Eh, right? Somewhere there. Then discussing it, quote, unquote, discussing it, right? Something like that. And trying to determine which schools you're going to apply to. Everyone applies to what? Two or three high schools? Is that usually how it works? Yeah. Two or three high schools. And then you know, the open houses. And, the, open houses, and the, yeah. uh, the interviews. And yeah. the visitation days. Yeah. Gosh, eighth <laughs> grade so much more fun than all that, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely. Let's yeah. say that again. All right, so quick memories. Quick, so Tell us something about the last 10 years that makes Yeshiva Noam so great. What well, could you tell us? Well, last year I actually won color war, which was a very good memory for nice. me. Nice. It was very I felt really involved in color war, and I really, I really enjoyed it. They give you a chance to have a leadership role, huh? Yeah. In a uh, outside of the classroom activity. Anybody else? Uh, Mia, Eitan, mm -hmm. anybody else want to tell us something about the last ten years in this school? 
Um, so sometimes we'll have sales for chesed. Nice. And we'll sell and we'll sell like milk and cookies for breakfast. And we did one last year on, on Spare Day, and it was really fun. Very good. It's all, all like student run. Very yeah. good. They yeah. give you guys a lot of responsibility, it seems. Yeah. How many students are there now in Yeshiva? No, would you guys know? Would you guys have any idea how many students there are? 800. About 800? You guys realize? You guys realize you're the kings of the 800? You guys realize you are the, you're the highest level of all 800 students? So you, you get that? <laughs> it's the eighth graders of Yeshiva Noam. Let's hear it from Abigail and Ari and Mia and Eitan. Thank you so much for joining us, guys, and good luck this year. Have as much fun as possible, even as you consider what high school is going to be like. Well, it is a great honor for me to welcome Rabbi Yudin, Rabbi Benjamin Yudin, of course, Congregation Shomrei Torah in Fairlawn, but today... Rabbi Yudin is uh, accurately portrayed as one of the founders of Yeshivat Nam. Rabbi Yudin, a pleasure to welcome you to JM in the AM. Hi, so How nice are you? to see you. I know, imagine that. We don't normally see each other. But in this case, we do, and it's not even Arab Shabbos. How That's do you like right. that? That's right. Uh, I mean, you, you must be looking back, and you probably look back very often, frankly, uh, when you think to the early days of this uh, incredible educational institution. But today's a good day to look back because they're celebrating 18 years here. Hi, 18 years. So uh, what do you remember about the very first days of Yeshiva at Noam? Because as I recall, you were among the first to say there was a need for another school in Bergen County. Correct. So I'm going to go back not 18 years, but 20 years. Right. Approximately 20 years ago, it was on a Simchas Torah. And maybe because I had just a little bit more than a little bit to have a lachaim, okay, with the balabatim after, you know, the... Uh, In those days, that was allowed. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Okay. So what happened was there was a definite need for another school. Why? Thank God, Bergen County was and is growing. And simply speaking, there were children not getting in to the established yeshivos, and talking very openly, there was an influx of families from the former Soviet Union still oh, at that time. Interesting. There were Israelis coming to our community. And being very clear about this, schools could be objective as to, you know, who they are going to take, not going to take, etc. So Plus, frankly, you wanted to encourage them to go to yeshiva. You okay, wanted them to. Okay, thank you. Right. Good. So you Correct. Are, I yeah, get it that's now. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So there definitely was a need for another school. Okay. And Hachkoch uh, Pratis, we were after the festivities. A gentleman named Heshi Mortkowitz, who, please God, is very much involved, remembered. He had just retired. A younger gentleman and I said to him Heshi I have a job for you we're gonna start another school <laughs> and that's how it started on that Simchas Torah and uh, I am so grateful because Hazorim Bedima Barina Yiktsoru that's exactly where we are sitting now those who put the time the effort and I want you to know it was a two-year process in order to uh, have this school begin with the blessings of the other school. Right. Uh, I spoke to the other principals, let them know why we were doing, how we were doing it, etc. We went and found, I can tell you, Rabbi Hagler, who truthfully blew us away. On uh, our first interview with him, uh, he stressed one word, and thank God he's lived up to his word. He said, Midos. In this school, we're not only going to teach clearly that which is usually taught, but we're going to teach a love of Judaism and a love of Midos. And he will have a curriculum, he assured us, starting with pre-K, K, through, high, through the eighth grade, as you saw the sure. young boys and girls before, but a curriculum of Midos. And we said to ourselves, wow, yes, we need it, we want it. And like I said, the rest is history. And over a two-year period, we planned the opening of, uh, of Noam. And uh, we are so grateful that it has taken the course that it has uh, over these 18 years. 18 years later, it's a very strong school. It's a very has a very strong presence in the Jewish community. It's being emulated 
by schools not only in this area but others as well. It's really become a leader, a leader in Jewish education. And what more could you ask for? That's right. 18 That's years right. later, Rabbi Yudin joins us as we celebrate. <coughs> excuse me, as we celebrate 18 years of Yeshivat Noam and look back at these 18 years. We we for obvious reasons stress that faculty is the key. You mentioned Rabbi Hagler, and we acknowledge, of course, his am am amazing role. But he would be the first to say that the faculty are uh, you know are on the front lines and providing this you know, rich and fun experience for the kids as they learn everything uh, in both the Judaic and uh, secular departments. And uh, you know how difficult it is to find good quality faculty. It is a, it is, you know, frankly, it is a, <laughs> a big challenge. No question. And it seems this school, thank God, has, and he has been able to identify people who really relate well to the kids. And that's part of the success here. Correct. And I can only tell you, while well, this week is Chayi Sara, as we'll hear, please God, in a day. And you two. and I have been in Hebron together in Chayi Sara. Oh, wow. As an aside, but go ahead. What a special <laughs> It certainly was. Okay, but I can only tell you, what made Avraham different than those that preceded him? He was not the first one to believe in monotheism. The difference is, Laman Ashayat Saveh, as Bonavez Beso Achorov. He was able to perpetuate what others were not able to do. Why? Because of tzedakah or mishpat, which is exactly what the, uh, the, the text says about Avraham Avinu. And what does that mean, tzedakah or mishpat? It means that there's an approach to life. The first approach is that of generosity, a generosity of spirit, a welcoming, uh, which is so important. And then there's no question about it. There has to be rules, and the rules are applied. But I really believe that children love to come to school here. And that is something, I'll be very honest, uh, when I was in <laughs> elementary school, I don't know if I, I'm not going to take the name of school. But love is not the word you would have used. That's right, that's right. But So that's something which is exceedingly... I'm with you, by the way, that. <laughs> exceedingly special, and uh, we're so proud of it. And if others can emulate this, well, that's, you know... Uh, very special. Well, it's wonderful to have you here on this special day. I'm a little surprised that Rabbi Hagler did not insist you wear orange and blue today. You did go with the blue, but I don't see any orange. But nonetheless, you'll probably get a pass because you were so instrumental in the beginnings of this fine institution. Uh, but no joke, all kidding aside, I should say, uh, Mazal Tov. Uh, happy Chai anniversary. And uh, Chazak V'Amatz. We should continue to go forward with places like this. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Cool. Rabbi Yudin, of course, we'll hear from him, of course, on Friday. We are on our way, by the way, Rabbi Yudin, to Pittsburgh right after here. We'll be in Rabbi Wasserman Shul tomorrow morning broadcasting, and then Friday we'll have an opportunity to hear your words about Parshas Chaye Sara. All right, uh, a big thank you to Mrs. Debbie Berman. A big thank you to uh, Madison Caterers for catering and sponsoring this morning. And now we get to say a big thank you to Mora Adina Mermelstein. Mora Adina, wow! I mean, we've had... We've had uh, We've had ovations on the air before, but that was a nice spontaneous ovation from a group of youngsters that she is now going to lead in some wonderful uh, musical selections. Moradina Mermelstein is with the fourth and fifth grade choir. Let's hear it. And the fourth and fifth grade choir are going to be singing some beautiful songs uh, for us this morning here at JM. In the AM. We're going all the way until 10 o'clock, everybody. Mara Dean, are you all set? You're all set? Take it away.
JM in the AM with the Shivat Noam uh, fourth and fifth, third and fourth, fourth and fifth grade choirs, everybody. Give yourselves a nice round of applause. How is it possible? Oh, that's what we call her now? So apparently Miss B is now Mrs. S. So I told Mrs. S. <laughs> Mrs. S.'s nephew and my son went at it, at it at the, on the basketball court last night. And two other schools faced each other. So we were reminiscing and talking about the uh, present day. Anyway, uh, if you have Mrs. S. here, you have another great uh, quality faculty member, I must say. That is true. Uh, I will also say that Mora Adina Mermelstein's amazing. Let's hear it from Mora Adina. And she claims the choir's amazing. So they get a big round of applause. And leave it to Yeshivat Noam. We show up. They're not doing, they're not doing a regular Jewish music song. They're doing their original words that Mora Adina wrote. They're doing the Feel the Magic in the Air song for the very first time. It's never been performed before. First time. You guys can't just get up and sing Jewish songs like any other school. You've got to have original words, and you have to have a debut, a world premiere. And sure enough, you saved it for us, which we appreciate. So the second song everyone heard was the Shivat Noam Chai song, appropriate for the 18th anniversary, words written by Mora Adina. And the first one talks about Derech, it's a Yeshiva Noam song, talks about Derech Eretz is our motto, talks about Israel being our homeland, mentions the fact that people should come out and see your basketball team and other teams score their points, and it also mentions that the teachers are awesome. Mora Adina, did you feel comfortable after knowing the kids in this school writing the words, our teachers, they are awesome, in this original song? You know what I loved? Of course, today I have no voice, but that's because <laughs> we're getting ready for Spirit Day. What I loved was, I'll say Beshame, I hope you don't mind, Please. Amitai Kessler, when we were doing our teachers, they are awesome. So we didn't do it for the choir, just because we've got a lot of hands going on there. But for the rest of the school, we did our teacher, right, Amitai? Our teachers, they are awesome. <laughs> because they are awesome. With hands in the air. And this school is awesome, and we're very lucky to be such part, part of such a unique place. How long have you been here? Baruch Hashem, I just finished my 10th um, This is my, finished my 10th uh, year. Your 10th anniversary. 10th anniversary, a that's right. A decade I, at Yeshiva Noah. I have to give a little shout out because the words to the Spirit Chai song, really, I had a lot of help from my family because uh, <laughs> there was one Shabbat recently that I said, no one's taking an afternoon nap until we get this fourth <laughs> verse done. This That's fourth the way to get it done. done. Yeah, I was just going to say <laughs> And you know what? I didn't let them. I think Ms. Chai Rachel was there too, so she knows I'm telling the truth. Yeah, and Rabbi um, gave up his naps 18 years ago, so well. he knows exactly <laughs> what you mean. Um, so thank you for having us. The uh, pleasure having you, and, and in all seriousness, not to, that people should not read into any of this, schools have different levels in terms of the way and how seriously they take their music and extracurricular departments. I would assume if Maradina's here for 10 years, under your leadership, where I would assume music and extra curricular like that is so vital, then she must be doing a great job, frankly. She is doing an amazing job, uh, really just inst instilling a sense of music. But it's more than just the music. Laura Dina instills a, a love of Torah, um, Eretz Israel. She's constantly talking and teaching the children about Israel and tying it in. You're going to see she runs a beautiful Onik Shabbat every single Friday with the younger children. And I'm sure, although I haven't uh, even discussed it with her, but I know for sure this week will be so special because of Hashat Chayi Sarah uh. and Shabbat Chevron. Um, she's had people calling in live from Chevron for to our own egg over the years. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I'm sure <laughs> we're going to be seeing. And she year. calls in live yep. on my Yom Ha'atzmut show every year. Mora Dina that from Yeshiva right. Noah. That is right. Each year. <laughs> so the spirit of that day, I'm yes. sure, is very big here in the school. And no joke, I wouldn't say that you're going to go on record saying that music is as important as math, but you do believe that music is as important as any academic subject. A hundred percent. So Definitely. That we could say on the record. I'm lucky because I get a lot of teachable moments in my classroom. So we may be learning about great uh, composers, you know, great <laughs> composers from 200 years ago, but we may also be learning that, you know, there were great people, great nigunim that have gone on hundreds of years and have been passed down. That's true. And Big uh, part of our heritage yes, and tradition. Exactly. All right. We'll send your regards to Pittsburgh because you have Please family out there. Please tell my brother there. and sister-in-law I say hi when you get Certainly there Certainly will. And a, as, as we say, in, in this difficult week for the Jewish world, it's amazing to concentrate on the Jewish future by being here and seeing all these wonderful kids. Are, there, are we keeping them? Are they lined up for another... No, I think they're good. Oh, we're they're okay. Great. We're going to say th we're going to say thank you to them, and uh, we're going to see them a little bit later. Thank you, choir members. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Batya Paul with us. Batya is also a founding parent of Yeshivat Noam. You would think with all the founding parents here, the school is five or six years old, but no, it's eighteen years old. 
and she's in addition to being a founding parent, a board member as well. Batya, founding wel board member. A founding board member. Batya, welcome to JM in the AM. Thank you for having me. Good a morning. pleasure to have you here. Um, well, obviously, you have some alumni in your family. I do. I have two. One who is currently studying in Yeshiva Shalvim, one who is studying in NYU to be a genetic counselor. Wow, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. I, uh, and her I, daughter was recently recently got engaged. Yes, Mazal she just got engaged. Yes, thank you. I've been asking this of most of the 18-year veteran parents, and that is what would your alumni say if they were here today? What would they say about this school? So I think that both of them would say that while they got a great academic education, which has enabled them to go on and be where they are, they maintain amazing connections and relationships to their teachers. They go back. My, my older daughter is an, an incredible writer. She sends her pieces to her teachers from here. <laughs> her elementary All school Elementary school teachers. <laughs> Mrs. Wasserman many times looks over pieces <laughs> of her writing. Um, they really have maintained amazing relationships, and I believe they really both will tell you that the foundation for the way that they lead their lives in terms of connections with people goes back to the Midot and, and, and foundations they were taught when they were young children here. I, uh, I made this point before, <laughs> and I think for us, meaning people in my generation, we would believe if they looked back and maintained relationships with high schoolers, with people they were you know, in, in that age group with in school. But when it comes to elementary school, it's amazing to watch that alumni of schools like Noam are coming back to school to visit, are in touch with their teachers, are handing them projects to look over, which is a new one for me that you just mentioned. It's really amazing they've been able to maintain this type of relationship. It's unique. It's unique to the school. It's the foundation that Rabbi Hagler set from day one. And it, again, 18 years later, it's still filtering through over and over again. My, I have an eighth grader. It, it, it filters through with him and the way he relates to his teachers. And, and I think we'll continue for a long time. It's really the foundation of our school. Being one of the founders, was there a point where you said, oh, this place is going to make it? Was it when the first 50 kids were enrolled? Was it the first, or it took a couple no. of years later where you said to yourself, you know what, we, I, I now feel like this is a real school. So my husband could tell you that I was on the board first. He then became president of the school many years later. I used right. to come home late at night, 1 o'clock in the morning from board meetings because at those days we were an ad hoc committee. Right. We discussed every little detail from every dollar that had to be raised to how the forms had to look and, and what the education was going to look like for kids in first grade in our first year. Um, and I would wake him up at 1 in the morning saying, we're not going to have enough money to pay teachers next week. We're not going to be able to get a building. We're not going to be able to, you know, like it was very stressful. There were a lot of moments where I believed we were going to make it. I just didn't exactly know how. Um, and look where we are. Look, it is unbelievable. Look at where we are. Wearing the orange and blue. One of the, one of the very first meetings we ever had with parents was in Batya's living room. Uh, mm -hmm. where we, and, and it was that just was a to small handful. parents to, to send their I, kids to I school. I think we, yeah. were, we were even talking, uh, having Esther File was coming on board. We it was were just, just about when we to hired hire Esther, Esther File to come on. That is true. Well, that we must be really on, yeah. early on if that was your first staff yeah. member. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, it was really, it was, it was an amazing journey. An That's, amazing, by the way, uh, you know, we said this earlier, the parents of those 53 students get a lot of credit. They put a lot of faith in a new school. Yep. In general, we see this with seminaries and yeshivas in Israel that start. Yep. We see this with high schools that start. People are at camps. People are hesitant to be part of that first experience, and they were brave enough to do totally. it. Totally. I remember Rabbi Hagler's words. He said, Lech Teich Rabbi Midbar. And that's what we did. <laughs> it, was, it was exactly that. We had no building. We had no early childhood director. And here we were giving him money and starting up, and, and look, what, look at what happened. So when you pull up now oh. in between these two buildings, what thoughts go through your mind? So I had the real privilege of working on building the middle school building. Nice. From, from that must be a great it feeling. It was an amazing experience. And I, 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 I drive up every day and I feel like this is an incredible institution. And, and, and I can't believe that happened from our tiny little building in Bergenfield to what we are today. It, it's a lot of pride. It's really, really a lot of pride. It's remarkable. Batya Paul, founding parent and founding board member here at Yeshiva at Noam as we celebrate 18 years. So I take this opportunity to wish you a big 18th anniversary mazel Thank tov. You. And uh, the school should continue to go from strength to strength. I mean, I mean. It's really remarkable. Thank and you. who do we have here? We have a TABC student who is going to be speaking with us via telephone now. A lot of students checking in this morning. Uh, the best was when we heard from somebody who's now in Israel. We heard from two of our from two, of our, two, yes. two students of Yeshiva Noam now in Israel. Rami Gertler, are you there? I'm here. Rami, what grade are you in at TABC? I'm in 10th. Tell me something about Yeshiva at Noam, something that you remember that was so amazing about this place as we celebrate 18 years this morning. Probably the end of 8th grade when we all signed each other's yearbooks and got those six sweatshirts. The last day of school a is a memory. good day, huh? <laughs> but on the, yeah. last, on the last day you get to reflect on 10 previous years, right? What? On the last day of eighth grade, you get to reflect on the ten previous oh. years and how amazing they were. Exactly. 
Uh, Rami, it's great to hear from you. Thank you for calling in. It's Rabbi Hagler. Hi, Rabbi Hagler. Uh, happy high anniversary to you and all of the Noam alumni, and thanks for joining us this and morning, And Rami, we're sure you're, you're surrounded probably Hi. by a bunch of Noam alumni right yeah. now. Tell them while we say hello. It's probably true. All right. What is the, uh, what's the story? You know, you, earlier we spoke to the eighth graders. We mentioned to them that, uh, or at least I tortured them by reminding them that they now have to apply to high school and go through this whole process. I would guess there are, I don't know exactly how many, but plenty of high schools in this area and beyond that have Noam alumni, right, that are taking your students yes. after eighth grade. Yes, I, at, at this point uh, we've been to, uh, we're, we're involved with all of the high schools in the area, primarily in the local high schools, but we have our students who get on buses every single morning and travel to uh, to some of the high schools. Are all those high grade. schools saying we want Noam kids? Is that what goes on in their offices? They are. In the they back are. office, that's what they're saying to each other. They Let's are. go after the Noam crowd. And it's, and it's graduates like Rami and the other graduates have called in that are really, you know, setting the table for all of the future Noam yeah, that's eighth true. graders. Once you see students and experience with students that are, you know, high quality and of a certain nature, you want their uh, you want their fellow alumni to be in your school as well. Rachel Markovitz is here, an 18 year teacher at Yeshivat Noam, which means well, first of all, good morning to you morning. and Mazel Thank Tov you. on the 18 years, and you really Thank get you. a Mazel Tov. We've met a lot of 18 year parents. I don't think we've met too many 18 year teachers here. What department are you teaching in? Um, right now, I teach in elementary school. I used to teach in early childhood. That, that brought me all the way through. All what grade years. are you teaching this year? I'm teaching second grade. How is that? It's amazing. Second it's graders great. are, I'm trying to think back when I had kids who were in <laughs> second grade and see what description I would use. But they're, they're a challenge, but they're fun, right? Yes, they're fun, and it's wonderful. We, get to, we start off Kumash, so it's like the most exciting time. Oh, that's true. That is a, that's, that's, that's an important start. Um, so, Rachel, what's the, uh, what's the story here? Why has this uh, institution been so successful for 18 years? Why, when you started in the in the, uh, the desert that was described earlier with those 50 students, why didn't yeah. it go in a different direction? Why did it go in this direction of building into one of the best schools in our community? I think it's because of the, the family feeling and the heart that we have behind everything. And we just, you know, with all of that feeling and emotion, there's just no way that we couldn't succeed. It was just, everybody wanted, everybody was so dedicated to the cause and to making it work that we just, it, it just was astounding. Everybody was, <laughs> In it. So on this spirit day, yeah. you would argue it's the, it's the spirit that kept everybody um, going. Yes. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, th there's a lot of practical elements to running a school. Yes. The definitely. faculty we've noted is amazing, and you're one of the 18-year veterans. Are there Thank other 18-year veterans? There are two or three other 18-year veterans. That's Remember it. when we started, we only had Oh, the early childhood, we, right. We'd sit around right. one table, and that was the yeah. entire faculty. faculty. <laughs> right. That was the faculty lounge was the size exactly. of where we are now. Exactly. <laughs> uh, now it's a little bit more complicated. Um, and and uh, so you you're one of those few people that gets to enjoy all this and yes. uh, and look back and uh, and appreciate just what's gone on here. And Rachel's also a parent in the school. That's pretty cool. And yes. Did you I ever teach one of your kids? No, not not in my class. Everybody Hagler really wouldn't allow that, huh? No, I don't know. Do you have a policy like that or not? We try to avoid it if we can. All right, that has happened. You're saying it has happened. Okay, won't go there. <laughs> I'm curious what happened. Anyway, so Rachel Markovitz, I thank you, Mazal Tov, on this 18th anniversary. Uh, may you go from strength to strength. And another 18, as I said earlier, to somebody who was here for 18 years, let's meet 18 years from now and review the uh, next 18 years. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And uh, wear the orange and blue proudly today. You want to reveal to us why it's orange and blue or not? Or is it random? Uh, it, it's a little bit random. It, random. Uh, it was really just to get, we want the colors that, that, that captured that spirit also, right. that had the bright colors right so if there would have been a splash of red are. or yellow in there that would have been acceptable as it well it just, might have been you just wanted stuff that stand that would stand out yes and, and give us a real identity yeah i didn't even realize elementary schools have colors until i walked in here <laughs> <laughs> but i but i guess they do i i should pay more attention as i tour the neighborhood you're learning a lot now about <laughs> some of the things we now have in elementary school you want to huh? hear something funny by the way I, I walk into a school uh for an away game for my kids away basketball game and they and i they say well you know security rightfully says you know who are you what are you doing here i said you know my kids on the away team said, what are the colors of the school the security guard says what are the colors of the team so i said honestly i have no idea like i've watched the play so many times i can't i can't remember so so you do see that colors have been a challenge for me when it comes to this stuff but in your case for my Hagler, i'm going to remember the art I'll, I'll tell you a similar story <laughs> yeah. i went last year to a um to a soccer game a playoff soccer game an away game 
and um, I traveled there and I got there parked and I'm coming into the building and there was a parent right in front of me just at the security desk who didn't see me right behind him and the security guard said to him um, okay who's the principal of your school at Yeshiva no I'm <laughs> with me standing right behind him fortunately he got it right <laughs> that would have been terrible I mean that I really would have would kicked have, him right that out that would have been awful <laughs> thank goodness the fate was on his side that's for sure uh, we should mention again during this week that we uh, commend those, especially in all the schools that are taking all the security uh, measures seriously and protecting our children uh, on a daily basis. It's a very important part of uh, everything that goes on in our schools, and we are glad that uh, everyone is taking it seriously. My thanks and everyone's thanks to Madison Caterers for sponsoring and catering this morning here at JM in the AM. Mordechai Shapiro is next as we continue until 10 o'clock at JM in the AM. Take a drive down the highway of life, give me five, my friend, here we are, we're together again, and remembering when we met, all the games, all the jokes that we laughed at, the pain that we shared, and we knew that no matter what came, our bond would remain the same. I can travel down any road Cause I know that I'm not alone I've got my friends and their loyalty I've got my friends who always see the best in me I've got my friends every step of the way My friends have helped to shape the man I am today Smiles that the memories bring keep me going through everything. There's a song that together we sing. I can travel down any road, cause I know that I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I've got my friends and their loyalty. I've got my friends. J.M. and the A.M. Friends uh, done by Mordechai Shapiro. Speaking of friends, we have a friend of Yeshivat Noam who at one time went to Yeshivat Noam. Chaya Hirsch is with us live via telephone. Chaya, are you there? Yes. What grade are you in at Kushner these days? I'm a freshman. Oh, you just left Yeshivat Noam. You just graduated in June. What do you, yeah. have, to, what do you have to say to Rabbi Hagler about the big 18th anniversary celebration? <laughs> That's true. You have any great memories from Yeshivat Noam? My singing at graduation. <laughs> everyone's everyone's on my graduation. Yeah, with Moradina. 
Um, and what about the uh, and what about preparing you for high school? Do you think Yeshiva Noam did a good job in preparing you for the adventure you're on there? 100%. Well, Rabbi Hagler, what more could be said? Hi, it's so great to hear from you. Please say, say hello to uh, Rabbi Rubin for me. Okay. Have a, lot a great of, day. lot of great people over there at Kushner, and one of them is a graduate of Yeshiva Noam. That's Chaya Hirsch. Uh, next, Rabbi Hagler, is Joyce Buckman. Nitzanei Noam. This program is introduced to me as follows. Normally, the the youngest grade would be, just enlighten me, the youngest grade would be? Will be pre-K, which we call Bud's four-year-olds. In your building. Right here, yes. What you've done is, with Joyce Buckman's leadership, you've created something called Nitzanei Noam, mm -hmm. which invites parents of two- and three-year-old right. students to send those students to your program, right. which is now its largest that it's been ever, yes, correct? Yes, it is. We have 37 children in the program now. We are busting at the seams. You're yep. a principal of two-year-olds now. <laughs> and I love them. <laughs> they are amazing. And They're when he cutest. comes into the building, they love him. Believe me. What do, what do your students last year called you? Mora, what they call Mo you? Mora Joyce. Mora Joyce. Yes. Mora Joyce, look at your alumni sitting I in front of us. Them. These I are see, your alumni. Yep, yep. This. Yep. I see some of them sitting right in front of me. I mean, should we speak to them about their memories of Nitsa <laughs> Noam? Should we get them up <laughs> I, here? I don't know if we should do that. <laughs> we'll see what, they, what we get. I mean, we've been <laughs> asking all the alumni <laughs> about their reflections and their recollections of their experience. Right. Maybe. Maybe it would be a good opportunity to find out what they thought. I'm game if you are. <laughs> so these are now four-year-old students who yep. are in the youngest grade at Yeshiva at Noam. But again, mm -hmm. as we just pointed out, your program, which happens in Teaneck, is open to uh, parents and students who are two and three years old. Right. Uh, as and the natural progression would be once they complete that program, they come they here, come here. Yeah. to Yeshiva Noam. Yeah. So these the faces are all recognizable to you. Um, every many one of them. Many, every one of them. Many of them, and I just met them uh, the other. Oh, few that's minutes why I'm not ago. being fair because right. not everybody many is, of them is from and your I just program. Met, right. Right. I just many met right. a few. But many yeah. of them are from your program, and they're these. And look at them; they are enamored by our conversation. Isn't they're in awe. Isn't it amazing? Yes, they are. And there's tell me, can you put it into words what it is about this age? Say. Tell me something about, I mean, look, you'd think me being a parent and thank God having a nice family, I'd be able to do it myself. But you as being an educator and the professional, what is it about these young, incredible kids that's so amazing? So everything is new for them. Everything that we introduce to them is new for them. And our entire day is the curriculum. It, it's, not, it's not only when we teach them about Israel. It's not only when we teach them about Election Day. It's when we teach them how to hang up their coats. It's when we <laughs> teach them how to share with each other. The entire day is a curriculum. Nothing is taken for granted because they're so young and everything is so new for them. You're making a very, very good point. And that's one of the reasons why they're so enamored, as I said mm -hmm. earlier, with everything that's going on. And uh, everybody who's uh, here today, and they, they are enjoying this spirit day, as I hope you are as well. Yes, very much. A big very mazel tov to you. And by Thank the way, you. I'm told that we have someone with us live via telephone, a former teacher of Yeshivat Noam, who has uh, moved to Israel and is calling from Israel. Mrs. Nachama Konigsberg is with us. Mrs. Uh. Konigsberg, are you there? I am. Nice to speak with you on this big 18th anniversary day. Do you remember Yeshivat Noam? Of course. 16 years. Wow. Better known here as Mora Nechama. Mora Nechama, how many, uh, so 16 years, and give us, give us a recollection or two. Tell us something that's unique about this amazing educational institution. So when uh, I received the email from Rabbi Hagler that this was happening, I couldn't help but think of our first graduating class. <laughs> um, and I always like to think about their chumash ceremony in second grade when they came up with a dance for the Chazak song, which the school continues to do to this day. That's pretty cool. It's a nice tradition. Started right in Morna Chama's class. By the way, that can't be overstated. The Chumash ceremony in our elementary schools, and of course here, is like, it's, it's such a landmark, such an amazing occasion for the kids. And the parents love it. It's just one of those, and you have many of those. You have, it's one of those days in the, uh, in the many years that a student is here that are so important and so vital. It, it definitely is, and um, Mara Nacham and I sat many, many. She's our, our, our founding second grade um, Judaic studies teacher. First second grade teacher. And we sat for months to really think about it and prepare it and to do it in a way that's so developmentally appropriate and instilled such a love of Chumash and the children, and Mara Nacham just uh, pulled it all together, and, and it, we're, we're following in those traditions ever since. And it's going to be happening, like, when? what time of year does that happen, usually, the Chumash? In January. In January. Very nice. Uh, Mara Nacham, thank you for joining us, and a big mazal tov to you and all the former teachers of uh, Yeshivat Noam. 
thank you. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to call. Big fans of Yeshiva Noam and JM and AM. I appreciate that, and we are big fans of Yeshiva Noam as well, and we're glad you called to participate this morning. Uh, JM and AM from Yeshiva Noam in our final minutes. We will be uh, going until 10 o'clock this morning on this spirit date. What is the schedule for the rest of the day? I, I'm not to put pressure on you because you don't you don't have to necessarily let you know everything break loose and get into a big celebration. But is is there going to be some type of uh, recognition uh, today? I, or are we saving that for a different day? No, no. I want to highlight that we're doing many little small things in the classrooms, which are great, and um, in the lunchroom. But I want to highlight three things that we're doing today. Okay. We are, right after this, gathering the entire school, 807 students, out on the basketball court to form a human YN-18. <laughs> and we are going to be uh, the photographically on the roof using a drone, and uh, we're going to be taking a picture and, uh, of, of that. And a little bit later today, we have a tradition we started a few years ago on Spirit Day, a banner parade. So every, each grade makes a banner, and then the middle school, right outside of the front, lines up along the driveway, and the children of each grade march through it while they cheer them on with their banner. And then we gather in the middle school gym for a Spirit Day assembly. One of the things will be uh, the entire school at that time will be singing Maura Dina's new 18th anniversary Which song. We, uh, we have a special uh, video that we're going to be unveiling to the students for that. And it's just a, it's a great um, moment filled up with the tremendous ruach. Oh, so this is a, this is a serious day. Oh, this yeah. fun day is a serious day. And there'll be a parade here. we got to stick around. There'll be a parade here later today. Who wants to miss a parade? Are you kidding me? Uh, so it should be a lot of fun. Is there a Spirit Day menu, or is that for a different day where there will be a uh, – Yes. There's a, a Spirit Day menu, actually something th special. There will be a lot of blue and orange. Ah, fantastic. So we're, uh, we roll that out also, even in, even in the foods. You have all the bases covered, Rabbi Haglet, to say the least. Unbelievable. That's for sure. All right. Uh, Jay, I'm in the name with a reminder that Yeshiva Noam has – Offer, is offering uh, all three- and four-year-olds and their parents an opportunity to come and visit this coming Sunday. It's called Sunday Time for Prospective Families. Uh, if you want to hear stories, participate in music, have snacks and arts and crafts, playtime all together, it's this Sunday starting at 9.30 in the morning for three- and four-year-olds and their parents right here on West Century Road in Paramus, New Jersey, at Yeshiva at Noam. Register online by going to whynoam.org slash Sunday, whynoam.org slash Sunday. I am told that the Feldmans from Texas are with us live via telephone. Shayna and Sheva, are you there, guys? Hi. <laughs> Hi to you. The, are these alumni of uh, Yeshiva Noah? These are alumni. They don't live in Texas, but they'll tell you what they're doing. There. Why are you now in Texas? Um, we are right now on a Chesed mission with Berea and NCSY in Houston. Very nice. Helping families in need, I assume. Uh, and uh, what grades are you guys in in Berea? 12. Oh, 12th graders. Yeshiva Noam graduates, no doubt. And joining us this morning, we wish you a big mazel tov. Tell us a memory. Tell us something that you remember about all the years you spent at the Yeshiva Noam school. Um, I, uh, we came, uh, in, the mid we came uh, in middle school. So I remember going in before school started and... Rabbi Hagler having a meeting with all the new kids, and I remember saying that we cannot leave the meeting until we each had a donut. <laughs> a, a policy that I pray is still in existence here, <laughs> oh, Rabbi yes, Hagler. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and we have some for you. <laughs> I would hope so. Well, that's a good memory. Again, people pointing to the fun part of school, which I like. Well, best, <laughs> uh, best wishes to you. Good luck in Brewery, and, of course, with your own graduation coming up. And the call to what you're doing down in Texas. I bet the chesed component that you're doing with Bruria, I bet you some of that came from Yeshivat Noam as well, because I would bet that there was a lot of chesed opportunities here when you were in school. 100%. Thank you both very much. Shana and, Shana and Sheva, Sheva do you guys want to say hello to your mother who's standing oh. right in front of us, Mora Kara, our oh. early childhood director? Your mother, Mora, is here watching our phone Hi. conversation. A big hello. Shayna and Sheva, thank you very much. Regards to everybody at Bruria, and of course, regards to everybody at uh, in Texas. Now, um, I have mentioned uh, that we're heading to Pittsburgh straight from here. Rabbi Hagler said he's going to uh, load us up with lunch and dinner, pack it into the trunk of the car, and see us off as we head to Rabbi Wasserman Shul to broadcast tomorrow morning and to bring a feeling of unity and solidarity to our brothers and sisters who are still in the aftermath of the horrific tragedy that happened in Shul this past Shabbos. One of the positives in things uh, like this, and there are a few silver linings we know, uh, is that um, uh, children from all over the world get an opportunity 
to send the community members, uh, those who are mourning, um, first responders, police officers, etc., notes of thanks, notes that we're thinking of you, uh, notes of condolence, etc. And we are going to be taking, and I literally have them in my hand, Ray Hagler, we're going to be taking some of the, uh, well, all of the notes that were written uh, as part of our delivery to the Pittsburgh community uh, that were written by, uh, and written and drawn by Yeshiva Noam students straight to the Pittsburgh community. And this, I am sure, is just one time that you've had your students reach out and whatever the case may be, Israeli soldiers, those in mourning, tragedy, uh, whether it affects our community directly or not in the United States, I'm sure they've had the opportunity to reach out and do this type of project in the past. Yes, they definitely have, and it's one of the things that, that we instill in the children. And, and the beautiful thing is um, that I after a tragedy at times, the students will come into school and they'll have ideas. They want to know what they can do. initiate. Um, and we run with that. That's, that's even greater than some of the ideas that we have that is coming directly from them, and they're feeling that. We keep talking about um, solidarity, unity, being together, brotherhood, sisterhood. Um, again, I think it's one of the focuses here that is so vital, that, th that the students here don't just feel they're part of a school community. They feel they're part of a greater Jewish community. And obviously this week it's easier to feel that way, but I think in general you and your staff are able to convey that, which is so important. Yeah, that's one of the messages that we try to get across to the students from a very, very early age of being part of a bigger Jewish community and having a responsibility to that Jewish community. And that starts with the, the chesed programs that we do. Um, it's hard even to see now because so much set up here in the lobby, but the different collections that, that we'll do, the tzedakah programs, the visiting nursing homes, um, yachad and uh, friendship circle, um, and, and that really instills in, in the students that sense of tikkun olam that they're here to make a difference. Rabbi Chaim Hagler, I said I was going to give you an opportunity before we wrap up to um, roll back 18 years to a day. School started on a Monday in 2001. But on Friday and Saturday night, uh, things were not operating the way things normally operate when a school is ready to open its school year. Uh, you said to me that literally that weekend, parents, volunteer parents who were ready to send, who were courageous enough to sign their kids up from school, were also told there's no furniture in school and they're going to have to come and help build it so that it can be moved into the building by Monday morning. And that's a true story, right? That is a true story. It's exactly what happened. That, that Friday we were running, uh, our construction crew was running way behind. And uh, they were working and we couldn't even get into the building that Friday beforehand. And the furniture delivery came. So there was nothing in the building. They were still um, plastering the walls and painting the walls. And uh, furniture delivery came, and um, we didn't know what to do. So we took a chance. We checked the weather. It was supposed to be nice. We had them unload it and leave it in the parking lot <laughs> over Shabbos. And then we sent out an email to our small parent body that we had, that whoever's available, please come Motzei Shabbos to help build the furniture and put everything together and uh, we got there and thank god everything was still there and all of the parents men and women came they we didn't have any tools and they brought their tools and we started literally unloading these boxes and putting everything together we brought in pizza and uh, about one o'clock that morning we took a break to say slichos <laughs> led by dan michael and dan was uh, instrumental in, in leading this entire effort and he had already built some furniture before and that we had been he had been working all night at around four o'clock everybody went home and came back with their vacuum cleaners brooms because all of that work created an, a, a tremendous mess and they literally cleaned the floors and vacuumed and washed the walls. See, that's when you really knew things were going to work out. That when was you amazing. saw the dedication, the parents, and you. And then Tuesday, the, the first official full day of school is 9/11, and you and everybody in this area and and really around the world have to deal with it in their own way. I assume school ended up being closed that day, or how did things work out? So we didn't close school. Um, we kept it open because we thought it was safer for them to be there and uh, trying to get in touch with every parent. Any parent who wanted to come and pick up a child, right. for sure, that was fine. But we, we, know, we realized that it was difficult for some of the parents to get there, and their children needed to be in a safe place. Remember, they were very young. Our oldest children oh, right. were in kindergarten. I keep forgetting that. There was no eighth grade in those days. No, so it was really a matter of, you know, of, of sheltering them from this and, and letting them understand what was going on in only an appropriate type of a way. But th there we were, you know, just an hour or so you know, minutes earlier, literally, <laughs> into your celebrating, school. celebrating the opening, the first carpools pulling up, children coming in. It was just an incredibly joyous time. And then, as you probably remember, the news starts to trickle sure. in. At first, we didn't understand what was going on, and, and certainly 
uh, we had a, tr a totally different feeling by the end of the day. And the rest of the week you were able to stay open? The rest of the week we, w we were able to stay open. And we know the so. role, as we said this uh, more than once this, sh uh, this show, we know the role of the faculty and uh, people like yourself when it comes to kids just becoming familiar with what happened and helping them recover from all of that. Just one episode, obviously, um, over the last uh, 18 years. All right, we have to give a very well-deserved shout-out. And Rabbi Hagley, you'll join me. The YNPA, I'm assuming, is the uh, Yeshivat Noam Parents Association. Yes, that is correct. And the YNPA, number one, sponsored the uh, Spirit Day Bandanas, which have been, uh, that's one of them right there, right? That's yes, it is. one of them right there, the Spirit yes, Day is. Bandana, celebrating 18 years. In addition, they've sponsored the choir, and um, from what I'm told, they are a very dedicated group of parents. So I wanted to make sure to recognize them before the end of the show. We thank them. They are a dedicated group of parents. And Spirit Day actually started a few years ago. It started from the YNPA. It was their idea, and they brought it into the school and that's just one of the many programs that they brought in to enhance the students' experience here. They just didn't realize it would be a year-long celebration, eventually. Well, this <laughs> year. This year it is. Spirit Day has become Spirit Year here at Yeshivat Noam. And I want to take an opportunity to thank everybody here at Yeshivat Noam, including Nick. Nick of Yeshivat Noam, I am told, is one of the instrumental people that helped us uh, get on the air and stay on the air. So thank you, Nick, and thank you to your staff who were here bright and early this morning yes. to let us in. You have a lot of dedicated people. I did notice that your security personnel never removed their eyes from the screen, which is extremely important. They're wonderful. And they are wonderful people. And from our own staff, I want to thank Avrami and, of course, Yoni, who's here as our engineer. I want to thank Amy Vogel, who we spoke to earlier. And, of course, Miriam L. Wallach for producing this morning's show and Rabbi Hagler for hosting and everybody here at Yeshiva Noam who really made us feel well we had a feeling from the beginning that we feel very welcome here but we really feel very very welcome and we wish everybody a happy um a happy 18th anniversary and i am told that we have some seventh grade girls here that there are some seventh grade girls here hey uh, everybody uh, yeah there you go some of the members of the noam knights girls basketball team uh who played last night and won congratulations all wearing uh, their orange and blue and one student whose name is... Dahlia Hoffer. Dahlia Hoffer. Number 34. Has written a communique to my audience. You ready for this? I'm, I'm excited to this hear This is it. how we're going to wrap things up with this official communique. She writes, Yeshivat Noam is the best school because the teachers taught me how to act with respect. Um, then she writes, that, that was shavach, that was praise for Yeshivat Noam. Then there's a bakasha, there, there's a, uh -oh. a request. She says, please can we have Jim for a second time this week. Uh, Rabbi Hagler, between me and you, that sounds like a reasonable request. So please. And lastly, uh, Hoda'a. Thank you for teaching me everything from buds to seventh grade. Sincerely, Dahlia. So there you go. Thank you, Dahlia. Thank you, Dahlia. Yeah, all the seventh grade girls that are here today. That does say it all, doesn't it? It does. It does. Rabbi Hagler, I thank you. Thank you for having us here. I thank you so much for being here. And I, I couldn't have even imagine celebrating this 18th year without you. I appreciate that. And happy 18th anniversary. Thank you. I like to think we've been here from day one, but I didn't have to build furniture. I didn't have to sweep floors. I didn't have to schlep anything. All I had to do was basically congratulate you on the air and let you know how proud I was back then that you were doing this and how proud we are right now that you've accomplished all of this. But don't minimize the role that you and Jamie and the M have had. I, I, I think I've mentioned this before on the air that so many people have told me that they've heard about and learned about and understood who we are here at Yeshiva Noam through Jamie and the M. I appreciate that very much. We should go from strength to strength and you should have an okay. amazing spirit day and a peaceful and safe 18th spirit year at Yeshivat Noam. Thank you. We wish you a safe trip down to Pittsburgh and, thank and we you. thank you for as you always represent the Jewish community in, in every situation. And you, and you guys are always there for, for Jews all over the world. Thank you very much. We're going to do our best. And I thank you for that. Achenu Yisrael and Achim Achem, our brothers and sisters in Israel, we are with you. It's your favorite America's one and only Jewish Moments in the Morning Radio program heard on listeners-sponsored digital radio, around the world, the web at NachumSiegel.com, on the NachumSiegel Network, and, of course, on the beloved NSN app. And that, in fact, wraps up our amazing visit to Yeshivat Noam. Thank you to the students, the faculty, the administration, to the choir, to Madison Caterers, to all the wonderful teachers and parents that we met, board members, everybody who had a role in making this a fantastic visit for us to Yeshiva Noam this morning. And, of course, to Rabbi Hagler and Chavi Hagler and everybody who served as our host today. Um, you'll be hearing a lot more about Yeshiva Noam, I can tell you that much. They are a big force in the world of Jewish education, and we're proud to be associated with them. Tomorrow, as you know, we're live from Pittsburgh. We go there now. 
We'll be at Ray Wasserman Synagogue and give everybody around the world a perspective on what's happening there and uh, continue our message of unity and solidarity with our brothers and sisters, not only there, but around the world. Till then, Nachum Siegel reminding you, remember the past, live the present, and trust the future.